This is TNA, the new face of professional wrestling. He's coming. Some hear only what they want to hear. TNA's hanging their hats on Sting. A fatal mistake, in my opinion. He was on top of that mountain for a lot of years. I mean, he set standards in this business. But this is 2006. See what they want to see. To be in the ring with one of the greatest, most prolific athletes to ever grace our sport. To be in the ring with an entertainer's entertainer. And that's just how Sting feels about the alpha male. <laughs> believe only what they want to believe. I've been in the ring with the biggest names in this business. The alpha male is Darwinism incarnate. They know this is the power in TNA. Intimidation. I took TNA to Hulk Hogan. I think at times, people are intimidated to step in the ring with me. But beyond delusion lies the truth. He's coming. I think Sting coming to TNA is huge. He is an icon. He is a legend. That kind of star power, that kind of charisma. Every time he comes out there, he looks up and he gives that yell and that roar. And those people are with him right there. He's a legend in this business. Do you people want to see Sting? The newest member of TNA is a man called Sting! It's a big The man called Sting is back. The main event is going to be the alpha male, Monty Brown, and the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, versus Captain Charisma and Sting. An icon reemerges. A mighty warrior returns. The moment of truth is upon us. So, Finger is coming to TNA. He's coming. It's showtime. And now, TNAWrestling.com presents Final Resolution. Tonight, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling presents its first pay per view of 2006. Tonight, the face of TNA changes forever because tonight, Sting makes his long awaited and highly anticipated return to the ring. It's time. Shelly. 
Holly, Aries and Strong. Features two former X Division champions. One of them, Matt Bentley. Sanjay Dutt may be one of the best X Division wrestlers never to hold that title. And here's their tag team partner. Their partner from Hell, Michigan, Chris Saban. Here he comes, the former X Division champion sporting a new look. I'm going to tell you something, you want to start off a pay-per-view with some of the best athletes and the hottest action in wrestling today. We have just put it out there for you because these six, I'm going to tell you right now, will tear the house down. These are the kind of wrestlers that little kids watch and they say, I want to do that when I grow up. I want to be that kind of an athlete because that's what these guys are, athletes. How about that impact matchup, Don? A week ago on Spike TV, the three-man team that, well, yes, they were whining up to that point in the words of Jerry Lynn, but they proved that they belong among the top stars of the X Division. They knocked off a three-man team of AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and Chris Saban. And then when you look at the opposition that TNA management and Larry Zbysko from the championship committee put against them here at final resolution, certainly no soft touches. Two former X Division champs in Saban and Bentley and the rising star from Bombay, India in Sanjay Dutt. As we see Alex Shelley trying to rearrange the facial features of the new blonde Chris Saban. Well, look, if you look at Alex Shelley, he's got a little new blonde going on in his head of hair, too. And I don't know what that blonde streak is. He's just kind of a character. Again, breaks down the Shelley cam, as I call it, the, the camera as he films everything in the ring when he's out there. But he's somebody lately that's been on a little bit of a streak himself. What's going to be interesting, Mike, to me about oh. that gentleman? What a shot to the back of the head. Wow. It's how the chemistry is between each of these teams. They all are all relatively new with working together. What a drop kick by Saban to the back of the head of Alex Shelley. Now his oh. own partner was just power bombed right on top. Sanjay Dutt for the pin and a two count on Alex Shelley. You saw off that drop kick, Alex Shelley checking his ear. I mean, that's a case where you hit somebody with that oh, kind of impact this. in the head. You, you might bust an eardrum. Alex Shelley biting the thumb of Sanjay Dutt, using it to get the advantage. You know, we always talk about what a student of the game Alex Shelley is with all of his videotape work and the like. He is so unorthodox, however, when it comes to that in-ring offense. Nice arm drag by Sanjay on Roderick Strong, the man who has so many different variations of the backbreaker. Sanjay, oh, look at these arm drags, just incredible. You're, you're looking at, at six guys that are also trying to prove to each other who's the best in the X Division. The X Division is so much about competition. And even though they're teaming together, it's also like a rite of passion. You want to be where Samoa Joe is right now. You want to be the one holding that belt. And when these guys are out there, they're trying to do anything and everything. It's innovative, different. You mentioned Alex Shelley. He's somebody that nobody can prepare for because he's so different. Nice right right there by Matt Bentley. Tracy from ringside, cheering on her man, Matt Bentley, who's fired off into the corner, able to fold over Roderick Strong. Nice deep arm drag by Matt Bentley against the Messiah of the backbreaker. Boy, I just love the way Tracy cheers on Matt Bentley. Talk about the bounce. That's the Bentley bounce. Uh, uh, you got that right. And that outfit right there is accentuating it quite well. But you mentioned Roderick Strong beside the backbreaker. He's one of those guys that can hit it from so many different variations. And he's told me that we haven't seen a half of the variations that he has. Austin Aries, another one who's been so good since coming to DNA, right now is caught on the wrong side of the six-sided ring. Would you call him the squeaky wheel? That's right. Because well, Austin, quick pin attempt hit by Bentley off the suplex. Austin Aries, let's face it, he was the spokesperson for this team of Roderick Strong and Alex Shelley and himself. And they've opened up some eyes. I mean, you beat a team like they did on Impact recently when they when they beat Saban Daniels and Styles. They deserve an opportunity. And I think it's a great call by TNA management to feature them here in the opening matchup at final resolution. Yeah. Dutt charges into the corner, elevated to the apron by Aries. The left-hander tries to catch him with a big blow, but it's blocked. And Sanjay, is he going to do the sprinkler? It looks like he's getting ready. You can see him as he's going. Oh! Roderick Strong, though, comes in to the aid of Austin Aries. And now Roderick Strong comes over with a couple shots to save it in Bentley. And now they've got Sanjay down on their side. Absolutely. Now watch them cut off the Look ring. This. And watch the triple team move. Oh, man! Double boots by Shelley. Directed into the midsection of Sanjay Dutt. The follow pin. Referee Johnson down for the count, but only two. 
saw right there how Alex Shelley uses. Wait a minute, Dave Hebner again out here as he's TNA, TNA management consultant, Dave Hebner. Where's he at? I don't know. Where is he at? He's looking up into the crowd. Oh, he's out. He's out amongst the crowd here at the Impact Zone. What's he looking at? He's not looking in the ring at this point. Oh, looks like he smells something bad. I'll tell you this though. That move by Alex Shelley right there, all the weight on there. What a what a way to combine all three members. And that's given the advantage to Strong, Aries, and Shelley right now. You see Roderick Strong with the butterfly suplex. Keep in mind what he just did. Focusing, working on the back of the opposition, because he's the master of the backbreaker. Now turns things over to Austin Aries. The boot to the midsection, and then crashes down after springing off the ropes. Where? Across the back of Sanjay Dunn. Austin Aries went, oh, using a strength right there as he powers him down. Go for a quick pin, doesn't quite get it. I'll tell you what though, these guys have been committed since they went out on the limb. And Jerry Lynch said, hey, stop whining, start winning. They have been focused and you've got to like the direction that these three are going. And now when you think about the talent that's on display in the ring in this opening matchup, after a series of vicious kicks and then Sanjay shot down to the concrete at the arena floor. I mean, all six of these guys, Don, are in their 20s as we just saw Roderick Strong with the slam. Well, check this out. Speaking of X Division pioneer Jerry Lynn, an agent working behind the scenes with TNA. The camera over the shoulder of Jerry Lynn, a very interested observer here at ringside for this matchup. Well, I like that about Jerry Lynn. I mean, these guys got his attention. So he's out here watching. I think he wants to see, are these guys ready to take the next step? We know Saban is, we know Bentley is. Sanjay Dunn, like you said, maybe the best X Division athlete not to win a title as we see. Look at this, oh! Diving head, but that time by Aries. And then quickly, you see the cross face applied by Alex Shelley. I think when Jerry Lynn, he's here to, to see it for himself, to see up close and personal, Shelly, Strong, and Aries battling against Bentley, Dutton, and Saban. Maybe in the mind of Jerry Lynn, that victory recently on Impact, you think it might have been a fluke? I mean, it was, it was one win. They certainly beat three great wrestlers. I think Jerry Lynn wants them to continue to prove themselves. Well, anybody can catch somebody on a bad night, and maybe that's what they did, but I'll tell you right now, they're working together as a trio, as a team, and Sanjay Dunn has got to get a tag in either to Chris Saban or Matt Bentley, or this match is gonna be over here in a real quick. Boy, you're not kidding. Sanjay Dutt on the receiving end of a brutal beating for several minutes by all three members of the team. Roderick Strong, he's just the, the current one who's applying the offensive pressure here against Sanjay Dutt. He's been assisted by Shelly and Aries as they've been in total control of this matchup. Sanjay extends the leg, catches him with the boot. And look at this guy, wow! He spun around like three times and see why I can catch him right there. With the I, I'm dizzy. I am Multiple too. revolutions punctuated by the DDT. But now can he get the tag? And you can see Saban practically begging. Get me in there, we haven't seen him. And he does get him in and here comes Chris Saban. Oh, what a shot to the gut! Perfectly placed boot to the midsection of Shelly. Close line attempt by Shelly does not connect, but definitely that Hurricane Rana did by Saban, who comes into the corner with the big knee and drives it right into the chest and face, and now he's gonna hang Alex Shelly upside down in the corner. Oh, so he just applies the foot right there to the chin and pulls back. Ooh, man! Kicks and slides right into the face of Alex Shelly. Oh. in midair. First it was the baseball slide drop kick, then he went airborne, caught him a second time. The drop toe hole sends Aries right into his own partner. Now it's Roderick Strong, who just got caught with a mule kick. I'll tell you what, it's almost like Chris Saban was planning everything he was going to do while he was out there watching, and he is just taking them all out like bowling pins, just one after another. Two for the price of one that time by Saban. Now, as we see the crowd at the impact zone, Saban connects, and Zagiri to the back of the head of Alex Shelley. Could be time for the shock. Alex Shelley scouted it though, he knew to get out of that. But again, it's Zagiri to the back of the head by Saban. Bentley off the top, drops the elbow, pin, two, oh. Aries caught his
his own partner, Shelly, and Austin Aries gets sent out to the arena floor courtesy of Matt Bentley. Great hesitation there by Matt Bentley on Austin Aries. He just let Aries come right to where he wanted him as he goes for a quick pin. Strong just in time to break it up. Strong in to break it up with a double sled. Oh! And then there's one of those backbreaker variations for Matt Bentley. Sanjay in now. Sanjay Dutt and Roderick Strong. Man, Sanjay Dutt just hit Roderick Strong dead on right there. This is his chance. Could be going for the Hindu press. Sanjay gonna go high risk. Austin Aries cut him off. Just in time as Austin Aries gets there. Right as Sanjay Dutt was gonna go up, he took a little too long, he didn't know. But you can see Saban realizes as he pushes Austin Aries out of the ring. You're right, just shoved him down to the arena floor. He went earlier for that cradle shock, but it was blocked. And now Saban is gonna fly, look out. Oh, right through the ropes. Right on top of Austin Aries, right on the concrete. Suicide dive by Saban connects. Action in the ring now, Bentley and Shelly. And Matt Bentley just powered Shelly down to the canvas. This is Matt Bentley's chance right here. He's gonna the go only for the super here. kick. Super oh. kick on the way. Oh, he gets nailed by Strong. He cut him off with the drop kick at Roderick Strong, just as Bentley was setting up to super kick Alex Shelley. Tell you what, Matt Bentley right now is, is in there in no man's land, and you've got Shelley and Strong with Saban and Dutt both outside of the ring. Bentley is gonna have to hold on to one of them to get in there now. Tracy up on the ring apron. Face to face and nose to nose with Roderick Strong, oh. and there's the super kick to the side of the head. Look at this quick roll up by Shelley too. of the match, the team of Alex Shelley, Roderick Strong, and Austin Aries. Damn, they are not to be denied, are they? That was one of those situations where Matt Bentley was stuck. He was caught in there in the middle, two on one. Alex Shelley able to take advantage of it. And take advantage they did as we take another look. There you see Shelley with the double boots. Boy, does Saban get elevation on that drop kick. There's the Tope Suicida, the suicide dive. But here's the match right there. The one, two, three for Shelly on Matt Bentley. Shelly able to use that weight perfectly right there to not allow Matt Bentley to get his shoulders up, and it's all about leverage, and he had it. Great response from the crowd here at the Impact Zone for final resolution for all six of these competitors. And Don, what a way to kick off what is going to be a very memorable and a very historic night tonight at final resolution. And it's all headlined by the return to professional wrestling of state. Oh, and the anticipation is so great, but there's so many more great matchups that we've got tonight. We'll start it off right there with the Man Beast Rhino and the Monster Abyss. NWA World Tag Team titles on the line. America's most wanted to defend against Team 3D, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, the X Division title at state. Samoa Joe, the champion, undefeated against the challenge of the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. And here it is, Christian Cage teaming up with Sting as they take on the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett, and the alpha male, Monty Brown, in the main event. And I'm gonna tell you something, just when you look at the crowd and you see all the people with their, their faces painted and, and ready for Sting, everybody wanting to know. On that note, let's take a look at the history of that dysfunctional family known as Four Live Crew. Roll it. Trying to separate BG and Conan. BG James and Ron. Oh, oh God! BG! He just leveled BG James with a care shot! Conan is snap! The truth! Look at the look on the truth face! What's gonna happen with the truth? He said, Are you gonna hit me? Conan trying to hug him! Ron the truth killing looks so confused! He's, He's in shock! I'm done with it. Yeah, yeah, man, you're not lost with nothing. You are my brother. How can this be fixed? You saw him hit me. I, I can't let that go, Dad. All right, we just gotta have a little forgiveness. There is no fixing this. No, no disrespect. Like I said, I'm done. I ain't got nothing to say. But I know Conan may be the key to this whole puzzle. Maybe we can get all the same page. Who knows? He was one thing, he's another. I thought maybe he was gonna do something to me first. And you know what? I live by the code of the streets and I go by my senses. Man, we was like brothers, dog. I mean, it never should have came to this. Ain't no clique, ain't no crew, man. What am I supposed to do? I'm tired of being lost. Be done with it, man. Oh, if I let you down, I'm sorry. I'm ashamed that it would even happen. <laughs>
Q-Tip and BG, you want to do something yourself? Don't send an old man to do it! There's a new force in town, the Latin American Exchange! Orale! Arriba la raza! Damn it, Conan! That was my daddy! You tore that apart. Where did all this crap come from? In what pit of hell in your heart did you hide these feelings? You're getting an ass whipping, and hell's coming with us. I know I got family with me now. You boys are headed for a head-on collision with the James Gang. The following contest is tag team action. Making their way to the ring, accompanied by Simon Diamond. They are the team of David Young and Elix Skipper. The Diamonds in the rough. Hey, well, this is a team that was heading in the right direction, but it's also a team that's in need of a big tag team win right here. I think to get that confidence level up, Simon Diamond has got these guys ready to go as they're gonna take on a team that people have been waiting to see together for a long time. And introducing, teaming together for the very first time in Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, the team of Kip James and VG James. They are the James Gang. And teaming together on pay-per-view for the first time, Don, in some six years. Yes, they're back. You have asked for them. Formerly known as Road Dog and Billy Gunn, they are Kip James and BG James. Yes, they are the James Gang, and they are back together again. Put that music. Orlando, Florida, as well as the rest of the viewing audience, welcome to Final Resolution. Now then, let's make a little noise. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, total nonstop action proudly brings to you, it's soon to be, NWA Tag Team Champions of the World! He's that K to the I to the Pizzle, and that B to the G to the Jizzle. Together, we are the James Gang! The dynamic duo rides once again, and I only have three words for you. Get it! Got it! Good! Maybe more than three words, I'm not sure, but I understand what Kip James has to say. Yes, the James gang, they are back together for the first time in years. And Don, the timing of this situation, with BG James and Kip James joining forces, I don't think it's any coincidence that they are united, that they are family at a time when they need to be. The serious look on the face of BG James tells it all. If you watched Impact last night on Spike TV, you saw where his father, former wrestler, 66 years of age, Bullet Bob Armstrong, was forced to undergo knee surgery because of that brutal attack at the hands of Conan, Homicide, and Apollo, the LAX, the Latin American Exchange. Conan just went too far, he crossed the line. And you know that BG James would love to have the four life crew like it was, but that's all over now. They can't change that, and when, when that happens, you gotta go sometimes to what you're familiar with, your past, and there Kip James is. These two probably know each other as well as any tag team in the world, and they get a chance now to rise again as the James Gang. I'm trying to figure out what that that new look is that Kip James has on the top of his head. It's almost looks a little bit like the Grinch, the Stoke Christmas. Look at that. <laughs> there you that, go. That like a, that's that's the Grinch. That baby's one of a kind, I'll tell you that. Did you hear primetime Elix Skipper in the ring now with BG James? Did you hear, hear him in the locker room area before final resolution? He was telling everyone, including me, that he's gonna go out here and he's going to out-wrestle the James gang. That he's gonna prove himself in the ring to both BG James, Kip James, as well as to his tag team partner, David Young, and to his mentor, Simon Diamond, the 15-year veteran who's the man behind 
this group, the man behind the diamonds in the rough. And so far, Primetime's doing pretty well. Well, Primetime Ina Skipper is just one moment away. One, I don't know what it is, but just something exciting to happen to put him right back in that place that he was a while ago. I mean, we'll all remember him walking that steel cage. It's just, it's a memory that I'll never, ever forget. And I think he's on the right direction with what Simon Diamond has done. And he's learning to, to work as a team again with David Young. But you can see him right now. This is almost personal with Elix. This is just his way of letting these guys know. I know you're back together, but I'm not psyched out because you guys got some experience. And you can hear Elix Skipper putting the bad mouth to BG James. This is my house, he keeps repeating, as he was in control until BG gonna turn it around, first with that big right hand, and then drops the knee across the chest. Gonna go for the lateral cover, prime time matrix. He just matrixed right out of the pin attempt by BG James. It's almost like he wanted it to get to a two count, just so he could show us a little bit of that matrix and then and you can oh, see oh, that oh. string. See how quickly he backed off? Six foot five inch Kip James came into the ring and stared down Primetime, who just, he just put it in reverse and tagged in his partner, David Young. Well, I believe that Kip James, I think right now is as, is as happy as he's ever been here in TNA. The fact that he's back with BG and he has that familiarity, it's, it's, you know, it's just something that you've done for so long and it's got to feel good again. But I'll tell you what, if they aren't victorious out there, that's a big setback right now because they need to keep momentum going because you know they've got so much that they want to do to Conan after what, they, what he did, of course, to the 66-year-old bullet Bob Armstrong. Mid-ring showdown, David Young and Kip James. Kip James with the shoulder block. Oh, David Young, thought he was gonna use the back body drop, telegraph the move instead, first caught the boot, and then Kip connects with the right hand. David Young sent for the ride. Quickly off the ropes, leapfrog by Kip James, and now the double team attempt by the Diamonds in the rough. Missed with the clothesline, and Kip answers by taking both Young and Skipper over, and here comes BG. Oh, what a clothesline that was! Man! Takes them both out right there. You saw the strength of Kip James as he set him up, and then BG just came on and took him over. And Simon Diamond right now has got a job to do. He's got to get these guys back focused. Got to get them back in the momentum and in the ring. Simon Diamond, he was trying to get them refocused, trying to shout out a game plan to them, but the James gang drops down to the floor, meeting the minds of the Diamonds in the rough, and now Kip James has his attention on Simon Diamond, but BG realizes we win the match in the ring. You know, you talked earlier about the experience level of these two teams. No question that the overall experience edge would go to the James Gang. But let's talk about the year 2006 and the fact that the James Gang, they haven't teamed up. Oh, spine buster by David Young on BG. They haven't teamed up in years while David Young and Elix Skipper They've been working together now for months under the tutelage of Simon Diamond. And another thing, you've got to realize that BG and Kim have had so much on their mind with BG's father, and they've probably not been able to focus together on what they need to do as a tag team. You know, it's one thing just to get back together and say, oh, we're going to do it like we did, but like you said, that was so many years ago. They're going to have to get focused on what's in the ring right now, and after that spine buster by David Young, BG James, is seeing all kinds of stars, I can tell you that. You know, that's a great point, because when you think about this, the James Gang, their return to the ring, it should be all about concentrating on a team like the Diamonds in the Rough. But instead, as we see Skipper go for the cover, and referee Rudy Charles puts in the count, but only two on the shoulders of BG James. Instead of just plotting a strategy and, and trying to work against the Diamonds in the Rough, the James Gang, certainly in the back of their mind, they have to be thinking about Conan, Apollo, and Homicide, the Latin American exchange after that brutal beating to BG's father, Bullet Bob. Nice double teamwork here. First the drop pull hold by Skipper, and then the follow drop kick to the side of the head. David Young with the pin attempt, but referee Charles being distracted by Kip James. That's experience as a team. Well, Kip James realizes that BG's in trouble. He's seen him take numerous shots to the head. He's seen the teamwork of Young and Skipper and what it's doing to BG. He had to do that right there. He had to distract Rudy Charles, and it worked because it gave BG just enough time to clear the cobwebs and get the shoulder up. But, whoa, BG's got to get a tag in. David Young goes high risk, top rope moonsault. The 
does not connect against BG James, who's still down. You talked about the tag that BG has to use at this time. Yes, he's got to employ that tag. He's got to get the fresh man, his partner, Kip James, into the ring while Simon Diamond directing traffic at ringside. He gets the tag into Elix Skipper, and here comes Kip James. Oh, man, this guy's just so strong. You don't realize how big Kip James is until you stand next to him. I mean, and look at, of course, the, the years of working out, just the, 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 the size and the power, and what a shot he gave Simon Diamond right there. Just got tired of listening to him, I guess. Oh, went for the corner splash. Instead, he made contact with the turnbuckle. Watch Elix Skipper! Springs into the ring, drops him with the lariat, follow cover, BG in with the double sledge to make the save. Again, that experience right there, and here he goes, gonna be a little pump hammer right there. But David Young quickly in to stop it and, and not let BG James go where he wanted to go. This is part of the experience that Simon Diamond has brought to this team. Looked like in the ring he was gonna go for the play of the day, the POD attempt by Skipper. It's blocked by Kip James. He said, I'm gonna take him on a boat ride to Missouri. And power! Two, and got him! The winners of the match, the James Kang! Back together as a tag team. For the first time in over five years on national pay-per-view, and it's a victorious return for BG James and Kip James. Let's send it to the back, our broadcast colleague Shane Douglas with the fallen angel, Christopher Daniel. Ooh, you know, Christopher Daniels, it's been said that great careers are built on great moments. Great moments like, say, Final Resolution, where Sting makes his re-emergence in wrestling. But speculation is running rampant, Christopher Daniels, that you may have come back from that concussion just a bit too soon. <laughs> oh, really? Well, let's not talk about speculation then, Shane. Let's talk about amazement. Let's talk about how amazed I was that it took Samoa Joe six months to finally say something here in TNA and how amazingly inaccurate his statements finally were. I mean, Joe says that I've already been beaten. And yet when you look on the list of people that Joe has choked out, Christopher Daniels' name is not on it. Joe says that I'm injured. And yet last night, when I almost broke him in half with a chair, I didn't look too feeble or infirm, did I? Not to me. Joe says that he's gonna take a clean towel and mop up my blood with it. Well, Joe, Look in my eyes. Do I seem like somebody who's afraid to shed blood for what he believes in? You see, that's what it's gonna come down to, Joe. What we believe in. You see, you believe that you're unbeatable. You believe that no one in the X Division can stand up to you. But I believe that there's a big difference between unbeatable and unbeaten. And I believe that your reign of terror is going to come to a swift end. You see, I believe that when it comes to the X Division, there is no you, there is only me. And I believe at final resolution, I will spread my finest gospel at your expense. So I believe, Joe, that you should say your prayer. Let's go back to the impact zone. The following contest is an international X Division contest. About to make his way to the ring representing New Japan Professional Wrestling. This is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Yes, it is time for the International Showcase. An opportunity for us to present to you TNA's working relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is 29-year-old, six-year pro. He is the U30, the under 30 years of age champion with New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Tanahashi, Tanahashi, Tanahashi. Introducing his opponent from Gainesville, Georgia. He is the 2005. He doesn't have his award. He does 
doesn't have his plaque because of Shannon Moore, the Prince of Punk. You know, you saw that last night on Impact. Shannon Moore coming in and trying to steal the thunder from the phenomenal AJ Styles. Well, he was being a punk. I mean, punk's the key word right there. You don't come in and, and try to take away a moment from maybe the greatest wrestler that TNA has seen in its entirety. But let's talk about this matchup, Mike, is Hiroshi Tanahashi coming here, not just coming here to be seen, but coming here to face the best that TNA has. I mean, you, you've got to argue that he is definitely one of the best in the phenomenal AJ Styles. And I also like the fact that it is AJ Styles because of his competitive spirit. This is gonna be something to watch. Look at the charisma of Hiroshi Tanahashi, enjoying the fact that the fans here in the Impact Zone certainly relating to him. You hear the chance for both of these individuals. You saw the championship belt, the U30, the under 30 years of age, that's respect on the face of AJ Styles towards his opponent. He's held that belt for seven months. For nearly a year, he was one half of the IWGP, which is the equivalent to our World Tag Team Championship belts, IWGP Tag Team Champion, and Don, he has accomplished so much in his six-year career in the Orient. Many of you wrestling fans who remember back to the late 1980s, oh, from behind, he just surprised AJ with the drop kick and then the deep arm drag. In the late 1980s, there was a wrestler named the Great Muda, New Japan Pro Wrestling, sent him to the United States, and he broke out. He emerged as a star with World Championship Wrestling. Let's take another look at this corner drop kick, and that surprised AJ. And then look at that arm drag right there. It just connected it right in and sent it with force. New Japan Pro Wrestling sees something in Tanahashi, much like they saw in the great Muda. He spent well over a month wrestling in Mexico, and when the opportunity presented itself to bring one of the stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling to the U.S., Hiroshi Tanahashi was the man that New Japan hand-picked. Well, when you look at his style already, you can see a familiarity of the X Division. And you look at the build, you look at the speed that he has. I mean, you can see he fits right in. Oh, nice drop kick by AJ to let him know that, hey, this is my house. You better be careful when you come in here as he nails him with that. And AJ, is he gonna fly? Oh, he stops as Tanahashi got out of the way, but that's the reflexes that AJ has. Obviously, Tanahashi not worn down enough here in the early going, as AJ was gonna go high risk, some kind of a, a flying move, possibly through the ropes, but Tanahashi wisely able to move out of the way, and there you see the replay. Wow, what impact behind the dropkick. What leg strength for the phenomenal AJ Styles, Mr. TNA. You know what I thought was smart, though, that Hiroshi did right there was after the dropkick, he rolled himself right out of the ring. He didn't stay there to let AJ get him because he knew he was a little groggy. I mean, that rang his bell. He got out of there, cleared the cobwebs. Now he's back in. That's experience. Late in the 1990s, Hiroshi Tanahashi was recognized as the best professional style wrestler in college. You see, the college wrestling over in Japan, in many instances, is not like it is. Different standards than in the United States. Certainly, they have university amateur wrestling, but they also have clubs at the different colleges in Japan, and he was recognized as the best pro-style wrestler, and AJ goes airborne, drops the knee right across the head of Tanahashi. Follow cover, head the leg book. No, just a two count. Nice scoop and a slam there by AJ to set up that knee drop. And and AJ's one of those that, one thing he will not let Tanahashi do is get momentum. He knows how to stop that, even though these guys are not familiar with each other at all. But Tanahashi, just look at that. Look at the strength right there of Tanahashi. The release suplex, and you're right, they're not familiar with each other. First ever meeting between these two wrestlers, Tanahashi and AJ Styles, and AJ set for the ride. A flying forearm shot by Tanahashi takes him down, and then he goes airborne and drops the elbow. Wow, one right after the other. He's going for the pin. <laughs> AJ right now, I think, shaking up right there. I mean, look at how he does this. There you see him just use his strength as he throws him back right there. And then when he came back and he just hit him with one shot after the other, AJ right now is reeling a little bit. He's gonna have to somehow get his composure. Tanahashi, six years in the business. As a rookie, in his first year, he defeated Hall of Famer Negro Casas, the Lucha Libre star. In the year 2001, how about this? In the G1 Climax Tournament, which is a huge annual event over in the Orient, Tanahashi defeated Scott Hall. 
He has an incredible resume, and that's one of the reasons that New Japan Pro Wrestling knows that they have this emerging star aging in the train, fight out of the abdominal stretch, and luckily for Styles, he makes it to the ropes to get the break. I'll tell you what, Tanahashi is relentless, Mike. I mean, he's one of those that he doesn't stop. I mean, when he finds his his room, he goes right after you, doesn't let up for a minute. I mean, he just he doesn't allow his opponent, in this case AJ Styles, to catch his breath. And of course, Tanahashi realizes that yes, he is on the international stage. You look around ringside, Don, and you see cameramen, reporters representing all the magazines in Japan. They are here to document Hiroshi Tanahashi, who now has the sleeper applied to AJ Styles. And you know that Tanahashi realizes with all the journalists here from Japan, that the results of this match, they're gonna be all over the newspapers and magazines in the Orient. Dragon applied, he's got it on him now. He went from the standard sleeper now to the dragon. AJ Styles right now fighting for his breath, fighting to get some air, he's got to get to his feet. Tanahashi, as you can see, in total control of this match. Oh my now God! Spinning him around and he takes him down with the elbow to the gut. Giant swing, that out of the dragon sleeper goes for the pin, has the legs hooked, but no. Oh, he had the knee right there across the neck of AJ. Referee Andrew Thomas pulling it away right there. That was cutting off the windpipe, not allowing him to get any air whatsoever. But AJ, you can see, is, is needing some oxygen bad. I think AJ may be as surprised as many of the people here in the impact zone by the offensive attack of Tanahashi. The scoop and a slam. Now from the middle rope, went for that elbow drop. Styles rolls out of the way to avoid the contact. Oh, he had to right there. I mean, that would have been one of those finishing shots right there that AJ would not have been able to recover from. He used whatever he had left to roll out of the way. Now he's got to figure out some way to get the momentum back on his side. Maybe that'll do it. Nice shot to the back of the head. On the foot right there of AJ Styles. Styles caught him with the kick. You're right, Don. Drilled him in the back of the head. Kanahashi, slow to recover, trying to clear the cobwebs. AJ, he's been beaten on for the last several minutes by Tanahashi, and now both men back up to their feet. AJ charges across, connects with a pair of clotheslines, picks up Tanahashi at the head. I'm gonna try and take him up into the air. Tanahashi fights off the suplex attempt. AJ off the ropes. Tanahashi instead takes Styles up, positions him on the apron. AJ fights back, look out for the springboard. Here he goes, oh, he catches him with that flying forearm right there, right into the head of Tanahashi, and you can see he hit the back of his head at the mat, and he's trying to get a grip on where he is. This could be what AJ needs. Oh! AJ drops Tanahashi, pin, far leg hook, two. He gets two, no, shoulder up at two. So close right there, but AJ Styles, for the first time in a few minutes, finally saw some daylight, finally able to get things going back his direction. Now what can he do? Because obviously you can see Tanahashi's in incredible physical condition. It's not gonna be a, a thing without lasting him. You've just gotta catch him at the right moment to get the pin. AJ charges in, but Tanahashi's prepared. He's ready, caught him with a pair of boots right into the chest. Now AJ catches him with the elbow from the middle rope. He turned his back on Tanahashi, and he's gonna pay out of the full Nelson. He might try and suplex him over. And there he no, goes. and he just bombs him down. Power bombs him right there. Pin, the man. Two, another one. Oh, man, so close. AJ right now knows that he's in trouble. Tanahashi knows how close he was to getting that pin. You can see the anguish on his face. And you can see the frustration on the face of Tanahashi, as Don mentioned. I think AJ's surprised. Tanahashi may be a little disappointed that he didn't get the three count. Going Series on. of shots in mid rake Tanahashi with the forearms. AJ went for the wild kick. Tanahashi avoided it and drops him. With that double sledge, AJ quickly back up to his feet. Again, trying to get him right there in the, in the sleeper. You can see him going around. Oh, another kick to the back of the head. AJ just cannot seem to get any rhythm at all. Oh, man. Just powered Styles right down to the canvas. Tanahashi, cover. One, two, oh, just in time. And again, Tanahashi can't believe it. He's thinking, what has he got to do? I mean, I guarantee you, he's thinking, what do I have to do to AJ Styles to pin him? For those of you who had not heard of Hiroshi Tanahashi before this final resolution matchup, yeah, you're getting an education. 
as you see one of the great stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling bring his game to the U.S. Face first goes Styles into the corner turnbuckle. Now, position up on that top rope. Look out, Tanahashi follows up. AJ fights off, a series of right hands to the top of the head. Tanahashi with headbutts. AJ knows he's vulnerable right there. Tanahashi has a counter for everything that AJ does. Every reaction that AJ's giving him, Tanahashi has a counter. It might be a simple end of it all. AJ, though, always able to think above and beyond what normal men can do. He got the momentum. He can feel Tanahashi falling back. He used that to his advantage. Did you notice, Don, how he was able to turn and twist in mid-move? And there you see it. Great replay look at what we just witnessed. Able to move and shift that body weight and power Tanahashi down. Kick in the back of the head. It was just a grazing kick. Tanahashi, yeah, caught him, but he was able to avoid most of the contact. You see the mid-ring standing switch and another standing switch. Out of the full Nelson. It just, wait a minute, Shannon Moore just ran right by us. The Prince of Punk. Get this guy out of here. Oh, oh wait a minute. He just caught Tanahashi. He AJ then that went black. for the melee. There's the black. Yeah, he hit him with the black. And then it looked like AJ caught the Prince of Punk. Out of nowhere, you're right, Styles caught him with the kick. Swing and a miss by Tanahashi, and AJ gonna go for the clash. Here he goes, he's setting, oh, he hits it. Styles clash, AJ's got him, pin, one, two, got it. The winner of the match, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Shannon Moore, the Prince of Punk, tried to influence the outcome of this matchup. He ran in with the Mr. TNA Award that he stole last night on Impact. But that interference on the part of Shannon Moore didn't pay off. AJ hits the Styles Clash and gets the win. Great respect on between these two warriors. Well, AJ doesn't want to win this way, and that's what he's telling him. He doesn't want to win this way. He's sorry. He's apologizing right now. That's the class that he has. You can see that flag right there. Shannon Moore, that was just disgusting. Someone's got to get a rain on him. As you see Tanahashi handing it back to AJ in a show of respect that he bowed. Yes. Class. No, no, no! Oh, God! Not again! Shannon Moore, the Prince of Punk, just stole that black again. He stole the Mr. TNA award again from AJ. This is just getting out of hand. Before we hear from Raven, let's take a look at his history with Larry Zabisco of the Championship Committee. Benny Vidi Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. My first appearance on NWA TNA, I took the belt from Jeff Jarrett. I've had broken ribs, I've had broken ankles, I've had every injury you can name. But I think the single most painful experience I ever had was when Jim Mitchell scouted me. Because not only did he humiliate me emotionally by taking my hair, he also turned the blades upside down and nearly skinned me alive. The night I won the NWA World Heavyweight title was the most glorious night in wrestling history. You know, some would say that the real animosity between me and Zabisco is because him and the championship committee never granted me another title shot. Still blaming me for what happened in Canada. It's bull Zabisco! It's bull what about me? What about Raven? All the physical pain people lay upon me, that doesn't bother me. Emotionally, yeah, that hurts a lot. I'm gonna hurt you, Larry, because I have to. And final resolution. The best go, you mentally deficient, criminally negligent piece of crap, and this bull the best go. My career could end because of the machinations of Larry Zabisco. I don't even know who my opponent is in 24 hours, and I have no idea who I'm facing. The only thing that I hope is that he brings somebody else from my past, because there is not a person who's been in the Raven circle who I can't beat. There is no way that I will leave, because I've never tapped out, and I can't get pinned if I don't want to. But I'll never tap, and there is no way I will get pinned. Quote the Raven, nevermore. They say a cobra is most dangerous, Raven, when it's backed into a corner has no place to go. That's when it will strike. 
I've been in the ring with you, Raven. I know how dangerous you can be. I know what you're capable of. But I also know that the living legend has pushed your shoulders as far back against that wall as they can possibly go. Tonight at Final Resolution, Raven, I hate to say it, but it's do or die time for Raven. Larry Zabisco, you spindly-legged, dim-eyed halfwit. You look like a festering piece of dung shat out by a diseased yak. You're a fascist and you're a bully. They say absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, Zabisco, you have taken that axiom to all new heights. Larry Zabisco, the living legend, has made my life a living hell. See, understand this, Zabisco. Wrestling is my mistress. It's my passion. It's my love. <laughs> it's the one thing at night that keeps me from blowing my brains out. How dare you put me in a position where it could all end tonight? How dare you, Zabisco? Oh, don't you have more important things to do as the commissioner, like filing paperwork or tossing salads? Oh, destiny, destiny's at work, Shane. Mighty and unseen hands sculpt our mortal clay. Will she sculpt me one last title reign or a ladder into oblivion? Either way, either way, somebody's gonna get hurt. And Larry Zabisco, you better pray to God that it's me. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Hey, Raven, the time for the whining and crying is over. It's now time to do or die. You win, you get a title shot, you lose, and your history. Let me announce the final nail in your coffin. And I am proud to announce a man, X-Pac, Sean Waltman! Wow! Larry Zabisco coming up with Sean Waltman to return to TNA? I mean, Don, I, I gotta think back. The last time I remember seeing Sean Waltman in TNA, I was back in, I think it was around August, a matchup against Jerry Lynn. That's right. Oh, man, remember he turned on him. Exactly. Oh, that handshake. Oh, yeah, it was awful because it was such an unbelievable matchup that the two of them had. Here's a guy right now that has been gone from DNA. Everybody's been wondering what's going on. What a name to pull out right there, Mike. And again, when you consider what's at stake here, is it a title shot for Raven, or is his career over, and he had no idea who his opponent was gonna be? His opponent from the Bowery, this is Raven! Well, you can see Raven bringing anything and everything that's not nailed down. He has to. No DQ right here, this is a situation where he's gotta bring everything that he has. And he uses that shopping cart, he drove it right into Sean Waltman, and he chases after Larry Zabisco from the championship committee. Oh! And Zabisco on his bicycle, running around the ring. That enables Waltman to use the top of the trash can lid and drive it right into the head of Raven. Don, you called it no DQ, no disqualification matchup. Well, Zabisco knows that he just barely escaped. Oh, Ray, Raven would like nothing better than one clean shot to Larry Zabisco, but you look at this situation that Raven got himself into, he cannot think about anything other than Sean Walton right now. He has no oh. choice. And, ooh, you can see that Kindle stick right there, right in the back. He can't think of anything but beating Sean Walton. Repeated shots with that Kendo stick, that Singapore cane to Raven. As I'm, as I'm thinking about this choice by Zabisco, the hand-picked opponent for Raven, in essence, I think he's trying to come up with one who's nearly equal in terms of experience. Both Waltman and Raven, 15 plus years as pros, and boy, Sean Waltman is one of those guys that knows all the tricks, swinging a miss with a trash can, and Raven just crowned him with the lid. See Raven, his momentum took him out of the ring up. Trying to think of why Larry Zabisco would make this kind of a choice. And when you think about it, you've got to pick a partner. You've got to pick somebody that is going to be as motivated as Raven's going to be as motivated. I don't know, could maybe he have said, hey, you 
want to come back to DNA, then you go out there and you beat Raven. That's a thought. Oh, and Raven busted open. You see the blood gushing out of his forehead as he crawled first on his hands and knees towards Zabisco. But of course, from the championship committee, Larry has security men around ringside, and Sean Waltman just took out Raven as well as security. You can see right there as the camera was trying to follow Raven, right there with the security around him. Waltman took advantage of that, able to get a clean shot right there, as you can see Larry Davisco. Again, I have been on record to say that I think this is all BS. I don't like the way Larry Davisco is going about the situation. I think Raven is getting a, a non-fair shake. I think he deserves a oh! title shot. And this whole thing, I can't figure out this vendetta from Larry Zabisco. Well, you can't figure it out as we see Waltman use that. Oh, look at him use the shopping cart and just ram it right into Raven. But you also, Don, oh, got him again. You were not on the receiving end of those Raven effect DDTs like Zabisco was. And you know that's got to be in the back of his mind of this proud former world champion, Larry Zabisco, as we see Waltman now follow up way at the top of the entrance oh, lap and Raven fights back. Shot to the head right there. Raven saw the garbage can lid, picked it up really quick, nails him with it. But what a bunch of shots that Walman hit him with that car, one right out of another. But man, Raven just getting fueled by the blood dripping down his head. And now he's giving Joe Walman payback. Month after month, Larry Zabisco has put obstacles in the way of Raven, almost as if he's been, it's a gauntlet. As we see now, check this out, Walman and Raven, look out! shopping cart off the ramp with Waltman in it. And you can see right there, you the crowd going absolutely crazy. Raven able to, look at this. Oh, man alive, the shopping cart turned over his back, crashed on the stage, and then he crashed to the concrete. We come back live. Raven knows, he senses it here, that he's got to take advantage of this situation. Think of what's at stake. He's got the shopping cart. Oh, God, he rammed it right into Waltman's head. Well, I'll tell you what, turnabout's fair play. Sean Waltman was doing it to him, and he absolutely just rammed it into Waltman's head. And you can see him now grabbing the hair. Raven feeling it. Raven wins this match. He gets a shot at the world's title. Raven loses this match. He's out of TNA. Now going to go underneath the ring, going to bring out a table. Of course it's legal. This is a no disqualification match. Oh, and Raven, I'm going to tell you something. He cannot hesitate on anything. He's got to pull out all the stops. As you see him pulling out a ladder right there. Anything that he can use to win this match. He doesn't get a second chance, Mike. He's got the table positioned in the ring. He also brings a ladder out from underneath and now going to try and send Goldman into the corner and does chest first. Oh my, went for the clothesline, but instead it was referee Mark Johnson that went down. Spin kick by Waltman does not connect. And there's the DDT. There's the Raven effect. But there's no referee. There's no referee as he's not even in the ring to make the count after what happened to him. And Raven realizes that there's no way he can get the pin without the ref to count it. You hear the fans in the impact zone. They were counting along as Raven had the pin on Waldman. Re Larry Zabisco from the championship committee over to check on referee Slick Johnson, who's down and out. He's unconscious. Okay, well, Larry Zabisco better be careful right there and try to stay away from the grip of Raven because any time he can get a cheap shot. Oh, nice counter by Raven. Zabisco in. Zabisco's going to be the referee. Oh. One, two. Oh, oh what a slow count. Oh, oh, he got the oh. shoulder up in two. Oh, I mean, listen to the crowd. Come on. You, you sense the hesitation, but at the same time, Zabisco realized once he climbed into the ring, I'm not sure that, that, that Don, that he was confident that he was doing the right thing. Instead, now in the corner, it's Raven with a series of shots, but the low blow by Waltman evens it up. And then he drives him down face first, cut him at the face jam, pin, cover, two. No, just a two count for Waltman. All right, I'll, I'll give him that. I'll give him that. He could have he could have went a lot quicker if he wanted to. That's showing the, the professionalism in, in Larry Zabisco, which he has to. I mean, he had to make an executive decision right there. He had to take over. He's got to be the one now to count it out. Waltman has something up his sleeve. Takes that ladder and sets it up on the bottom corner. And now, oh, he took that belt and just, just drove it right across his back. 
There's just so many objects out there in that ring right there that you could, anything oh. can be used as a weapon. Oh, what a wicked oh. shot to the head. Yeah, that one, that, that, he just took the belt and whipped him right in the face. Oh, Dave Hebner, you see TNA management consultant looking on as Raven moves out of the way. Waltman crashes and burns on the ladder. He's so he's a count, 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 count. Come on, count it. Man alive. Goodness gracious, I had two birthdays before he got that count in. Only two since Zabisco. And Raven is frustrated at this, but he realizes, not I think if, if he goes on the attack against Zabisco, he runs the risk of, of right. turning his back and losing his focus against Waltman. You can't do that. He's going to have to force Larry Zabisco to count him out. He's going to have to basically put Sean Waltman out so that he can't get up, and Larry Zabisco cannot deny Raven that rematch. Got the table stacked up. Now he's going to go to the ladder. And Raven opens up the ladder. Waltman still down. Referee Slick Johnson unconscious on the far side of the ring, and that's why Zabisco has integrated himself into this matchup as the third man. You can see right here Raven going for the kill shot. Anything that he can do to put Waltman out of this so that there's no way Sean Waltman can beat him, and Larry Zabisco will have to count him out and drags him oh. up the ladder. Oh, look at there, he saw Zabisco grab a hold of the leg. Cassidy Riley and says, don't. I can't believe he's ready to just take his medicine like this. This is just Wow, what an, what, what an emotional moment as Raven no, waves to the wrong. crowd here at the impact zone. This is wrong. You got robbed. You got robbed. You got robbed. 
to the back. Shane Douglas with Ron the Truth Killings. He got robbed. Out now. Final resolution, huge night for TNA. Sting returns from exile. And when we last saw you in action, you had scored not one, but two of the fastest victories in TNA history over the Canadian strongman Bobby Roode. But as Bobby Roode left the ring, he had taken the victory on you. And may I remind you, for the first time on The Truth Killings, you're on your own. I remember you saying, I made history. Sometimes Superman has been making history ever since I've been in TNA. I guess I'm just a history maker, you know what I'm saying? As far as Bobby Roode go, Bobby, I go through you and every last one of those Canadians to get where I want to get to. It's like this, you kick my dog, I kick your cat. That's how it is. What's up, man? You can't call me back? Are you that mad that you can't call me back? Bro, I'm not mad. I'm free from drama. I'm happy. It's on. Yo, man, what happened to Kid BG and, and his dad, you know, forget about that. You know that I've never lied to you. You know that I've never given you bad advice. Am I right? You, you never lied to me. You never gave me no bad advice. You're right. That's right. OK. Do you think that what happened to them would happen to you, that I would do that to you? Do you think deep down inside your heart that I'd do that to you? OK. I love you, bro. You my big brother. But it's like this. <laughs> I don't know who to trust. How can you expect me to trust you after what you did to Mr. Bro, Armstrong? you can always bro, trust me. He was like our daddy, K-Dog. Come on, man. Okay, that, but the question is, do you think I'd do that to you? Um, only person I can trust is me, myself, and I. I'm Ronnie, free. do you think I'd do that to you? That's all I'm asking. I don't know what I think. Okay. I'm in the middle, remember? You, you got, you got I'm a in match the middle. To, you got Not a no match more. tonight with Bobby Roode. There's like four or five of his guys backup. You got no backup. But you know what? LAX, which is a big brother, me, I'm always going to have your back. I'm always going to have love for you, too. You think about it. Right now, you're angry. Just think about it. believe it? No. Raven's gone from TNA. Now, I keep thinking back to what he said earlier. He said TNA and professional wrestling is the one thing at night that keeps him from blowing his brains out. It, it's that opportunity for him to come out here and, and perform for these TNA fans at the Impact Zone. And now he, won't, he no longer has that outlet. I remember the day he arrived at TNA, the day out of nowhere he came in and grabbed the belt and ran off with it. And then the build up to that first title match with Jeff Jarrett and all the memories you've got with Raven. I, I can't even believe that he'll no longer be a part of TNA because he is a part of TNA. He's a part of the TNA family. I remember the that night that he, that, that he won the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Done that night that he finally fulfilled his destiny. King of the Mountain. The King of the Mountain match. Wait, wait a minute. We have cameras now. Cameras positioned in the back. Let's take it to the back. I'm not sure what's happening. Let's th throw it to the back. Raven! Hey, Raven! I got something for you. Don't forget your bag. Have a nice trip. Hasta la vista. Don't forget to write. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Hey, Grandpa. Don't be upset with me if you didn't take your Geritol today. I don't need this, Jackie. I'll be with you in one second. Actually, Raven, you were the one that I was, I was looking for. You see, you and I both have something in common here. Besides the fact of being escorted out ever so kindly, both of us are screwed around here by, well, let's just say some people. Hey, don't even start this. I don't want to hear no oh, one to start this. I'm thrown out of here, it's too. It's a lot bigger than what you think. It's yeah, a lot what? bigger than what you think. All right, let's go, Grandpa. I got a bone to pick with you. Have a nice trip. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Accompanied to the ring by Coach Scott Damore, proudly representing his home country of Canada. This is Bobby Rude. Boy, we want to hit on those comments from Jackie Gata outside the impact zone, words that she had for Raven, who is gone from TNA. But first, let's take a look on at what went down one week ago on Impact. Bobby Roode against Ron The Truth Killings. Record-breaking time. The Truth gets the one, two, three in under 10 seconds. And then Bobby Roode wanted to go at it again. And you look and see another quick roll-up. Ron The Truth Killings in about 30 seconds gets another pin. 
and Bobby Roode can't believe it. Well, you're right. In under a minute, he was beaten twice, but then the distraction by that big load. The Team Canada coach, Scott Damore, it enabled Bobby Roode to hit him from behind with that Northern Lariat and gain the three count. There's the one, two, three. Tonight at final resolution, it's time for the return match. This mother is a bad jam. Introducing his opponent from Charlotte, North Carolina. He is Ron the Truth Killings. I, I do want to reflect and concentrate on what Ron the Truth Killings said to Conan just minutes ago. Wow, do we have so many things going on around here. Let's talk about Jackie Gata. She said to Raven, we have something in common. Obviously, yes, they were both screwed in her mind. But what was that line about, it's bigger than you think? Yeah, she said it's bigger than you think, and it was almost like she was trying to insinuate that they had some kind of a, an alliance that he doesn't even realize. And that whole Jackie Gata thing is just so weird to begin with. What's the word you call? Bizarre. It is. And it's now with Raven on, I'd like to know what's going through her mind. But Ron the Truth Killings, his words that ring so loud to me tonight when he looked at Conan and said, I'm free. I think when it comes to Ron the Truth Killings, his association, first with the three live crew, eventually with the four live crew, and all of the problems, the inner turmoil from what I referred to earlier as a dysfunctional family, it's exactly what it was. As we see the Truth Booker quick roll up here, tried to beat Rude again in the opening seconds of this match. And only a two count as Gamor says, focus on the task at hand, Bobby Rude. Well, this is gonna be so embarrassing to Bobby Rude if he does get pinned quickly again by the Truth, right here on this big stage of final resolution. And Ron the Truth killing the man who seems on a mission, oh, he almost had another one. Yeah, very similar to the win on Impact, at least one of the two God victories, with that roll-up attempt off the ropes. Bobby. Bobby Roode is just absolutely confused in there. Ron the Truth Killings is in his head. He is in his head. I've never seen a man so psyched out. In fact, he had to have interference from Scott DeMore to beat him last time. Conan with the invitation to the truth to join him to join Apollo, to, to join Homicide as part of Conan's new group, LAX. I, it, it almost appears to be as if the truth wants to be his own man at this point. Right. Doesn't want to have to either rely on other men in his group. Oh, he's been hurt. I mean, he, every everybody that he thinks he can trust has their own agenda right now. Run the Truth Killings has to be his own man. He's got to be independent. He's got to focus on his mission. And you know what? I think it's the best thing right now for the Truth. Nice backslide up. And then the bridge, Rude and the Truth. And Bobby Rude back to the basics with the side headlock. Truth going to try and shoot him off, but Rude maintains the grip, put him around the arm. And then the Truth ends up with the roll up and a two count from referee Rudy Charles. Quick pin attempt again by Rude. Killings reverses it. And again, it goes to Rude. Look at these guys, just one run after another. And if you see Rude right there, kick him with the fate to break it. A great series of reversals, both Bobby Rude from Team Canada and Ron the Truth Killings. Bobby Rude right now cannot get a handle on the truth. I mentioned it earlier, but look at this. He's walking out again. He's confused. He says that's it. it. Where's he going? It's almost like Roberto Duran and Leonard. No boss, he's saying, I don't want no more. Gamore right in his face. Slapped him in the chest. Oh, oh man! The truth not wasting any time and nails him. You know, normally when Gamore gets involved, it's to distract his opponent. That time he was in the face of Bobby Roode. He distracted his own man. The last words that we heard, Bobby, we need this. And just at that point, we saw Ron the Truth Killings come flying over the ropes. And there's our right hand that jacked the jaw. I'll tell you something, another shot right there by the Truth. He's relentless right now. It's like he's taking all that aggression that he's had to put up with, with the previous 4 okay. And Oh, wait a minute, that's what Bobby Roode needed right there. An opening, he picked him up and just rammed his back in the steel ring post. And you can see Ron the Truth, Ron the Truth Killings is down and hurt. That's the kind of a move that can bring the level of confidence in Bobby Roode back up to what we've seen, Don, for the past several years 
as one of the thriving oh, members of Team Canada. Oh, I don't know if we caught that or not. I sure saw it out here. Good cheap shot by Damore. And now he's got the truth and going to toss him into the ring so that Bobby Roode can take advantage. Well, one thing about Scott Damore is he knows what to do to get that momentum shifted. And that's exactly what he did right there. And Bobby Roode now is going to get more and more confident as he has a chance to get things going his way. And that's what he needed because everything he tried earlier, the truth always had a counter for him. You're right. We're seeing it unfold right before our eyes. And the matchup turns in the favor of Bobby Roode. And that level of confidence rises. And of course, the interference by Scott Damore doesn't hurt any as well. Well, Scott Damore will do whatever it takes to, to get a win for his guys. I'll give him that. I mean, I don't, I don't like anything about him out there, especially when he's out there in the ring. I just don't think he has any place out here when his guys are so good on their own. But I will say this, he's dedicated to Team Canada winning at all costs, and that's what he'll do. You know, we were talking earlier about that personal pride, that professional pride, when it came to Larry Zabisco being dropped on his head by Raven. I think it's a similar situation here with Bobby Roode. I mean, he got beat by Ron The Truth Killings two times within a minute on national television. That has to put a dent into your pride. We saw The Truth here in the early going of this matchup. Take it right to The Truth. Oh, look at this, using the leverage. Yep. From outside, you see DeMar, the hockey stick, with the Canadian flag wrapped around it, helping Rude with that abdominal stretch. We saw the Truth take it to Rude early. Rude has now turned it around against Killing. Referee Rudy Charles just always in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he doesn't see it. Bobby Rude doing a good job of disguising what it is that him and Scott Demore are attending, and again, uh, pulling it on, and now Rudy Charles sees that they're using the hockey stick. Oh, the board out. Door ends up on his wallet because referee Rudy Charles said enough of that interference. Here's a roll up, here's a pin. Two, he's got it. No. Whoa. Well, every time he does that, you think he's going to get the pin now because he's had it happen so many times. But Bobby Roode right now has got run the two killings, reeling. He's tired, he's hurting. Ever since he slammed him into that steel ring post, it's basically been all Bobby Roode. And then you see that vicious, lethal mid ring lariat, then the scoop and a slam. And Bobby Roode going to head up to the middle rope. You're right, Truth has had zero offense for the past several minutes after being driven into the post. Ooh. Oh, what a what a, shot. a knee. What a Kill. shot. I mean, that was all the way across. Cover. He got it. No. <laughs> Run the Truth Killings right now. That, that His bell just got rung immensely with that knee. He's got to find a way to turn this around because if he can get it going on his end, there's something about it. But he's got things going his way that Bobby Roode just can't deal with. But right now, Bobby Roode is getting more and more confident as time goes on. Imperative for the truth to get back up to that vertical base, which he has. Goes for a series of elbow shots, but Roode cuts him off, grabbed onto the back of his jeans, and fired that forearm right into the lower back. Yeah, right in the kidneys back there. I mean, I mean, just think about the, the pain. That's just a jolt of lightning going through your back when that happens, and it takes your breath away. Bobby Roode using his power is what he's doing, which is his game. Again, he sends Truth back first into the corner. Killings able to get the elbow up and then able to get both boots up as Roode charges in and now drops him to the canvas. Oh, look at that expression. Is that a that picture paint? Tell a thousand words or what? Truth from the top. Oh, man. Missile drop kick on target. That baby connected. But a weakened Ron Killings is unable, at least at this point in time, to take advantage of that drop kick and follow it up with a pin attempt. Gamore from ringside, cheering on Rude. Remember, he said, we need this one, Bobby. Well, you can see there that Coach Gamore can feel the tide turning in the truth's favor. And he can't have a good counter by the truth with a good right, right back at Bobby Rude, And again, a nice block. Rude tries to fight back Whoa. right, but it's blocked. And Killings just reels off a series of right hands to the side of the head and a big one right to the top of the head. Oh, man, another shot right there. And again, he's got Bobby Roode reeling. Oh, coming right off the ropes. The truth does that so well. He just lets it happen and uses it. Flying forearm leads to a pin attempt. Two and no. Kick out. Oh, it looks like one of the two killings. I was just going to say that. His wrist or like something. He's favoring his right arm, but going to try and fight through that pain. Caught him with the right hand, but the reversal sends Truth off into the corner. Off the float over, Rude takes him up from the shoulder. Oh, man, nice counter right there is the Truth. Oh, ducks that, and here it comes. And he nails him with the kick. 
drops down, does the splits to avoid the contact, and then you're right, caught him with that kick, pin attempt. Here's one, one. here's two. two. No, two. What are you doing, Stephanie? This guy is just such an athlete out there, but one thing about Bobby Roode is he's so strong. He really is, and he's just like a tank. I mean, he just doesn't stop. And the truth realizing that now, and now that that Bobby Roode has gone through that initial first part of this match where he didn't get the early pin. Like we mentioned, his confidence just is built and built and built. So run the two killings. Look out for the high. superplex attempt here. Roode gonna try and fight it off, and no. he counters with a front suplex that drops killing. And killings again, grabbing that wrist or something. I wonder how he may have sprained it or broken or something. Cross body block. to do everything that he can to let the truth know that he's got his back. Oh, wow. He was like an eyes in the back of his head. The leader of the Latin American Exchange, the LAX, Conan trying to recruit Killings in disguise oh. with him, and Killings had his back turned. Rude hit him with the Northern Lariat. Pin, two. Bobby, he's got the three count. The winner of the match, Bobby Rude. The Canadians just stole one. I mean, Conan came out to try and have some words with the truth, but what it did was it distracted him in the end. I mean, it was just bad timing. I mean, he comes out there with the truth killings. It was that slight hesitation, just looking at Conan to see what it was he wanted. Bobby Roode didn't miss a second. He saw that opening and hit him with that Northern Larry in the back, and now you see Conan trying to let him know it's okay. Try to he didn't smooth mean things to do over. it. Sure, try to smooth things over, try to explain to him. I was just giving you the open invitation but the distraction enables Team Canada to take advantage and to get the win. Bobby Roode scores the victory over the truth. Conan says, don't listen to the people. Oh, he's don't listen to them, listen to me. Oh, Ron the Truth Killings has got to be more confused now than he ever was. And you can see the crowd not liking the, what Conan did, knowing that Conan cost him that match. There's some kind of conversation here between the two. You think the truth's going to buy in? No! Nah, he wants hey to boys, what? looks like we got a little family reunion. BG James. Only this time, Conan, you son of a bitch. Whoa. I'm gonna whoop your ass. Well, Man. he beat up his 66-year-old father, did Conan, put him in the hospital. Homicide. Oh, homicide in the ring and homicide in Conan with the beatdown now on BG. And what's the truth gonna do? The raw, the truth killing is just walking out of the ring. He's not helping Conan and he's not helping BG. Just walking out. Here comes Kip James with a chair. The other half of the James gang and he leveled homicide with this steel chair. We get Conan to roll out. Man, oh man. But the thing that still gets me is the truth watching BG get beat down. He is absolutely cutting himself from these guys. That's it, it's over. He said any association is history and Killings walks out. I guess he thinks the beef is with the James Gang and with LAX. Let's send it to the back. Shane Douglas standing by with James Mitchell and the Monster Abyss. Take it, Shane. In what is certainly a case of the immovable object meeting the irresistible force, James Mitchell, you're preparing to take your 350-pound monster abyss into battle tonight at final resolution against the War Machine Rhino. But first, the franchise is just dying to know, what are your thoughts on the arrival of the man they call Sting? <laughs> Sting's arrival signifies that the lines have been drawn and the war begins mm. tonight. And you, Rhino, are going to go into battle with Abyss, a battle you can't possibly win. <laughs> because despite being one of the fiercest competitors to ever step into a ring, you're still too obsessed with your own personal misfortune to get the job done. If you had been more concerned about wrestling instead of your estranged daughter, you might still be world champion, Rhino. I've got a little news flash for you. You're a mammal. You are supposed to reproduce. You're not going to win awards for fulfilling your genetic mandate. Rhino, you've lost your way. 
and your loss is going to become Abyss's gain. <laughs> Just think of your impending slaughter at the hands of Abyss tonight as being the lead float in your ongoing parade of personal failure. You, Rhino, are an endangered species, just like your namesake. And when I push that detonator, this weapon of mass destruction behind me is going to black hole slam you through the mat with the power of a 747 crashing to Earth. Rhino, tonight, the six foot eight 350 pound monster abyss has you scheduled for extinction. <laughs> and Team Canada, I will go through each and every one of you until I get my hands on that fat little bastard, Coach Damore. Hey, James. I got a little business proposal I'd like to talk to you about. Look at Damore, look at him bang off! Get him right now! Get that big load! Oh, who's this? Oh, wait a minute! It's the monster of this! He's got him choked! Ow! Oh, and throttled and drives him down with the choke slam! Black hole slam and he nails it! Never before has someone given so much of themselves to this sport. Woo and receive some return. But we never hear about that condition. Instead, we hear about this groundswell of sympathy for Ryan. The trials and tribulations that you face are nothing compared to the hardship that Abyss has had to endure. But he has conquered each and every obstacle that's come in his path. Here comes the monster from behind! The monster Abyss just hit the ring! ready to set his sights on gaining the World Heavyweight Championship. No! Abyss is a six foot eight, 350 pound weapon of mass destruction. He gets caught up by surprise there, Mike. Nails the ball to the double full line win. Rhino, Rhino coming in. We're gonna see the villain Rhino resolution. Now put a shot in the end ball. At Final Resolution, it's time for the Man Beast against the Monster. It's time for Rhino one-on-one -on -one against Abyss. Let's go to JB. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, about to make his way to the ring, accompanied by James Mitchell, weighing in excess of 350 pounds. This is the Monster Abyss! Yes, it was a very intense James Mitchell that we just heard from, talking about how he's getting ready to turn his weapon of mass destruction loose on the Man Beast Rhino. This all reverts back to that association between Team Canada coach Scott Damore and James Mitchell. Damore made a deal with the devil, and now it's time to see the monster against the Man Beast. What a matchup this is gonna be. His opponent from Detroit, Michigan, the Man Beast Rhino! Well, Rhino, you know, Abyss's mission is, and he comes flying to the ring, and he's not gonna stop. He goes right after Abyss, and we knew this was gonna be a brawl, and it's not disappointed. Look at this as they just go right into the fight. Now, would you expect anything less? You've got six feet two, 270 pounds of Rhino O, who telegraphed the back body drop, and it cost him against the 6'8", 350 monster Abyss. Man, I'll tell you what, you don't realize how big Abyss is until you see him, because, I mean, Rhino is so huge, and oh. Abyss towers over him. But Rhino's compact, he's gonna have to, to use that compact strength and not allow Abyss 
any kind of room to get that black hole slam. Abyss charges into the corner, but Rhino got the elbow up, now springs off the ropes, and took him over the top! What a clothesline, what power behind that from Rhino! Sends him all the way out of the ring right there, and do the man, that just shows you how strong! Look out! There he goes, right on the back of Abyss! How about that slingshot move by Rhino, crashing down on the top of Abyss, 270 pounder! Pulling off a move like that. I'll tell you what, this Orlando crowd has gotten so behind Rhino ever since day one that he came here. Of course, he had the brief stint as the world champion. I think they, they just have adopted him and they really get behind Rhino. It's been really nice to see. It, it really energized him. It has been amazing to see, to witness the fan support for Rhino. You said it energized him. It absolutely has. It's focused his career, I think, Don, especially at a point when he really needed it, all the problems that he went through. When he left the WWE before coming to TNA, all the personal problems as well, and he's absolutely turned his career around here in TNA, even to the point of winning the NWA World's Heavyweight title, and you realize that both Rhino and Abyss want nothing more than being right in that title picture as Abyss goes underneath the ring to pick up a steel chair. But James Mitchell has got Abyss focused on one thing. It's just eliminating Rhino. I mean, these battle lines have been drawn, and Abyss has one goal, and that's just to make life hell for Rhino, and Nick and C is doing it right there. What shots right there by the, from the chair. Oh, man, those just hurt just watching it. Violent shots to the back of Rhino, and then you notice that Abyss took the top of the chair and then just drove it down right across his back. It's just like a sharp point right there. It's like catching the top of the rail. But Abyss, he has that one-track mind sometimes while he's concentrating on the chairs. That gave Rhino a chance to catch his breath and go right back at it. You know, that may be the one negative. When you really break down Abyss in the ring, he, and, and oftentimes he gets that tunnel vision, and it cost him here. He brought all the furniture out from underneath the ring. He tosses the chairs in, and that's enabled Rhino to turn it around, drops the leg, goes to the cover, and gets a two count. Rhino knows one thing that he's got to do when he gets his opening. When the door opens, he's got to be fast, quick, and repetitive. He's just got to keep going at Abyss, not give him oh. any chance, but that power right there as he just slings him. You know, sometimes you can fight right through that tunnel vision, can't you? Yeah. When you're something like Abyss, and you can take that kind of a beating, and then get right back to your feet, and dish one out like he just did, shooting Rhino off into the corner. Mitchell loves this. He's got that steel chair, it's wedged in, it's sandwiched, positioned between the top and middle rope. And now, Abyss, his weapon of mass destruction, slowly makes his way over to Rhino and fires him off to the corner, but Rhino puts on the brakes. Yeah, Rhino saw it there when he went in the corner and right away put his arms up. But now he oh! does it, shot him right oh. into it. Wow. What a shot. You know, it's like you talked about that. There's nothing that grabbing somebody and flinging them like a sack of potatoes won't do to cure any kind of a momentum shift. You is know it, what I mean? Is it, is it too simplistic to break this down as the black hole slam of Abyss against the gore of Rhino? Well, that's what it's going to take. That's, their, that's what they like to do. And if Rhino gets that opening, He's gonna hit that gore and he hits you like a freight train. It takes the air right out of you. And by the time you react, he's got the pin and the black hole slam is, is, is one of the most devastating things we've ever seen in TNA. But to hit a move like the gore, the specialty of Rhino, he, he needs to, to mount some kind of an offensive here. He needs to not only regroup and recover, as we see Andrew Thomas went no part of Abyss, but he has to weaken this, this monster Abyss. It's not like he can just pull that gore out of nowhere here. He's got to weaken him and get in position for the gore. The open hand slap. Oh, man, directed right to the chest of Rhino. Well, what makes it so devastating is your opponent's worn out and they don't have any kind of resistance when you hit it. I mean, you have to time it perfectly because it's also one of those moves that you use so much of your own body throwing it into somebody like a bitch. The same thing with the Black Hole Slam, you're literally picking somebody up, twirling them around and slamming them with all your power. You gotta make sure that that opponent's weakened and wounded and has no chance to fight out. Abyss with the head vice, but Rhino fights and gets right back up to his feet, then comes off the ropes and Abyss dropped him in his tracks. Big Boot leads to a two, no, only two. Abyss right now just 
you wonder what goes through his mind. Jay Mitchell has, has always been the one person that keeps him focused, keeps him grounded, keeps him going in the direction that he wants. And right now you can see it in that direction is trying to twist Rhino's head off his shoulder. And it's also as if Mitchell is that one individual who has been able to communicate with Abyss, whether it's by words, whether it's by hand signals. He's been able to do it right now. He took him up to his shoulder. Yeah. Oh my God, that's 350 pounds that he had up. I'll tell you what, though, when he saw it, he went at it so quick and just got up there and just hit it and just slammed the back of Abyss's head. Look at this. It was a desperation move, and we're going to take another look at it. Wow. Just absolutely amazed he got him up to his shoulders and then powered him down to the mat. His face planted him right there into the mat. And you can see Abyss right now is still shaken up, but Rhino is still tired from the beating that he took from Abyss, and he's having a hard time getting to his feet. And not only the beating, but also the strength and energy that it took to, in one quick move to take the 350-pounder up. Swing and a miss with the clothesline by Abyss, and Rhino connects after coming off the ropes and dropped him with the Lariat. I mean, using those ropes to his advantage, that's what makes the guy... Oh, man, he just shot that shoulder block right into him, right into the gut. And here he comes and just nails him with the chair. Steel chair shot from the Man Beast has the monster rocking. Gonna take it, wind it up again. Wow, drove it right into the top of the head of Abyss. I know, just reaching back so he gets more arc in that chair shot because Abyss is facing. He's six foot eight. You've got to make sure you get that shot high up there as the crowd yelling one more time. And steel chair to the head. Yes, he gives them what they want, and that's why they love Rhino, to the former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion here at the Impact Zone in Orlando. He's, He's setting up in the up. corner. Can, oh, look at there. You Mitchell. see Mitchell grab him with the cane. Mitchell with the distraction. He's got his back turned. Keep your eyes on the best. Oh, He's got the steel chain. Steel chain in his hand. Oh, look out, Rhino, look out. Oh, he hits him dead on in the face with it. Absolutely caught it with that steel chain. James Mitchell did what he set out to do, and that was to distract Rhino just Murphy enough. Murphy it, pin. No, he gets out of it. Wow. How oh, did he kick out of that? I don't know, but that was really close to three. Mitchell up on the apron now. We talked earlier about this communication. He's, he's giving him the doomsday signal. He's setting off the detonator. He's setting off the detonator. He says Abyss finish him off. And now you can see Abyss sets him up, trying to wind him in, but no! Spine Buster! Rhino connects! How did he do it, Pin? One, One two, two, oh, man! I'll tell you, the strength of Rhino is just so impressive when you deal with a guy that weighs as much as Abyss and picking him up like it's nothing. Rhino, Rhino! Mitchell again, come you here, Pin. Let's see, see Rhino back up to his feet. He yelled, Rhino Driver. No. Yeah. How's he going to do a Rhino? He's going to try it. No way. Rhino Driver. No, impossible from there. Oh, look at it again, James Mitchell. Mitchell. He's holding on to the leg of Abyss. He's keeping in position is what he was doing so that Rhino was not able to lift him up with a Rhino Driver. Abyss gets a free shot in it because of it again. Mitchell always keeping out of the way of the referee. And uh oh. Is it going to be a choke slam? Got him throttled. Oh, nice kick right there by Rhino. Whatever it takes. Rhino. Oh, no. Look out. Rhino slam on the chair. Pin one, two. Oh, man, it was devastating on the chair. The winner of the match, the monster of Grand. It was just as physical, as brutal, and as violent as we expected. And it was the black hole slam that proved the difference. Yeah, a black hole slam onto the steel chairs after the interference by Mitchell. Rhino's so close to hitting that Rhino driver right there, but let's see it. You can see he throws their one shot in the chair. Look at these repeated chair shots here by Rhino. He just did one after another, and then there's the black hole slam right on the steel chair. Wow, the back of Rhino, as well as the back of his head, driven into the steel chair with 350 pounds of a black hole slam behind it. And the monster Abyss gets the victory at Final Resolution. We have been the ECW Tag Team Champions. We have been the WCW Tag Team Champions. We have been the WWE Tag Team Champions. 18 times all together, we have held the 
scheduled for one fall for the NWA World Tag Team Championship. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challengers, standing in the corner to my left. Tonight, they attempt to make wrestling history to become the first team to win the Grand Slam of Tag Team Championships in North America. They are the number one contenders for the NWA World Tag Team Championships, the team of Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3D. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, accompanied to the ring by Gail Kim. They are the current reigning and defending six-time NWA World Tag Team Champions, the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm, the Wildcat, Chris Harris, America's most Warning! We know that this is going to be a historic night. 
tonight, the return to professional wrestling of Sting. History will be made tonight, and here's another opportunity for history to be made. You heard JB say that Team 3D, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, yes, they have a chance to make history. They get an opportunity to win the Tag Team Title Grand Slam, the only belts that have eluded 3D in their careers, the NWA World Tag Team Championships. I think Don's microphone is not working. We're gonna work on that, work on that audio problem. As we see Brother Devon started off squaring off with James Storm. Lock it up mid-ring, collar and elbow. And Devon that time just took James Storm and just shoved him right out of that collar and elbow tie-up. They circle, you can feel the electricity in the building. The fans here at the Impact Zone, they realize what's at stake in this NWA World Tag Title matchup. They realize how important this matchup is to Team 3D. Back to the basics, Brother Devon, grounding James Storm, keeping it planted down on the canvas and down on the mat. Storm gonna try and get back up to take advantage and does with the side headlock. The fans know that Team 3D they said they'd give away those 18 runs as tag team champions to have just one opportunity to wear the NWA tag titles as we see Storm come flying off the ropes. Devon avoids the contact. Storm flies through, slides through, cut him with a boot. Quickly shot off into the ropes. Nice counter by Devon and takes him over. Hip toss and then a drop kick. I was gonna say when this whole thing started, Mike, I saw Brother Wade point, point to Dory Funk and give him the message. We're gonna get the titles tonight. These guys are so motivated. This crowd just came alive when they came out here. And you can feel it in the air, man. They are, this is a chance to be do something that no other tag teams have ever done. Team 3D psyched about this. The fans here at the Impact Zone and Final Resolution psyched as well as we see AMW use their notorious dirty tricks while Cat Harris in illegally drop Devon, and now Storm rifles off a pair of right hands. Here comes another AMW double team to the rope, and here comes Brother Devon back with that double clothesline. They know that Brother Ray is speaking from his heart when he talks about how important the NWA tag titles are. Man Ray high hip toss takeover, big scoop, and a bigger slam. Drops the elbow, he challenges him to get back up to his feet, and as soon as Harris does, he drops him with a big right. Here's the pin attempt by Brother Ray. Whoa, barely a two count. I'll tell you what, the action just going crazy right here as they're just sizing each other up. Everybody trying to figure out what the other one's gonna do. The key is, is not to get too emotional too early. That can tire you out. You got to stay focused, you gotta stick with your game plan. And one thing about AMW, they're not psyched out by Team 3D. You don't win the title six times and be psyched out by anybody. As you can see, Wildcat right there proving it. Pin attempt now by Harris and barely a two count on Brother Ray. You saw Harris go for the clothesline. Brother Ray challenged him. He said, bring it on. And Harris did exactly that. He dropped him with the lariat, went for the pin, but not able to put away Brother Ray. I mean, you just see these Titans looking at each other and trying to size each other up and trying to, to figure each other out. And that's what they're gonna do. It's just gonna be a test of manhood right here. But one thing about it, when the action gets flowing, it's gonna be all about quick, Tags, it's gonna be all about trusting your partner because that's what makes you a great tag team. You cannot win this on your own. Oh. Man, I can feel that all the way through the building. This is a matchup that, that wrestling fans have dreamed about, Don, for several years since the emergence of AMW and the NWA tag team titles as we see Brother Rako Senton came off that middle rope with that backsplash, but Harris able to move out of the way and tags in Storm. They've been waiting to see exactly this match, 3D and AMW with the tag team titles at stake. You can see right here as AMW getting everything going the way they want. Now he's choking Brother Ray right there, pulling back on the neck and using that tape that he had wrapped around his wrist, using that as leverage. And they're keeping Brother Ray over there on their side, knowing that the longer they keep him there, the better chance they have of pinning him. But Brother Ray already countering. And there he sends the Wildcat out of the ring. Wow. Harris dumped to the arena floor. Now tag in. Brother Devon in with a right hand for Storm. 
got him rocking. Quickly shot off into the ropes. There's the reverse of it. Brother Devon with that spinning elbow right to the chest. I mean, Brother Devon has been so dedicated to this title. Shot right here. You can tell the working out he's been doing. He's beefed up. He's absolutely been dedicated in the gym. It just means so much to him, and man, he just slams him down. Spinebuster pin, lateral press, no! Just a two count. Fans of the Impact Zone, yeah, they want tables, the trademark of Team 3D. Come on! Brother Devon puts on the brakes, here comes Ray in, scooping a slam, storm down, Devon headed to the corner! Well, that's what partners do right there, is Devon distracted right here, we go! Oh, he puts the head right in the middle! and hits it perfectly, man! Team 3D taking it right to AMW from the opening bell. There's another look at that diving headbutt off the top by Devon. I'll tell you what, when he, you look at that, that head of his and you figure he places it coming off the ropes like that, the pain that that's gotta cause. Well, the fans asked yeah. for it. Some more furniture being taken out from under the ring, Team 3D. Yeah, the patented table gonna come into play. Oh, oh. It's like they just let Storm do that. Wait a minute. Set him up and look at Wildcat did. He kicked gone. right at him, kicked the table right into both Ray and Devon. Storm slid through, they hit him with the table, but then Harris, I think he drop kicked it, I'm not sure, yes, but he, he certainly did. came with impact from behind and drove the table right into 3D. Well, that's AMW like trying to beat Team 3D with their own patented tables. Well, yeah, that's what they've got to do. You've got to trust your partner like this. And you can see right now that Jade Storm is feeling it. That was a great shot by Harris, but he dropped kicked that table into both of them. They're still reeling. And you can feel the confidence building in AMW. Boy, well, you sure can. You know, Team 3D through the years, on the decade plus as a tag team, there's been times where they've certainly not been angels. But when you think about what America's Most Wanted has done, especially over the course of the past few months, just like this, they're not afraid to take shortcuts as we see Chris Harris, in effect, using that tape from around his wrist to clothesline Brother Devon. I mean, they use beer bottles. Oh, yeah, they, they use interference from Gail Kim. And they're, I, not, they're just not afraid not, to take shortcuts, to do anything within their power to keep the NWA Tag Team titles. To me, it goes back to the night that they, they made the association with Jeff Jarrett. It goes back to the controversy in Canada. From that point forward, we've seen a totally different America's Most Wanted. Well, it is, and you know what? It's almost like it's their progression. A lot of people would say, well, they don't they don't play like they used to. They don't play fair anymore. But when you ask AMW about it, they feel that's part of their growth. That now they're willing to do anything and everything to win at all costs. And it makes them a very difficult and vicious opponent. And oh, oh, man, he missed them and he had to steal Ringbox. You're not kidding. Shoulder first goes Harris. Right through, right past the turnbuckles, and the unprotected shoulder made contact with that steel ring post. Oh, listen to this crowd, man. The roof is coming off as they're trying to will Devon back up to his feet. And here comes Brother Ray, and look at the rights. One right after another. They can feel it. Oh, what a hip toss that was. Tossed him halfway across the ring. High back body drop for Storm. Measure yes. comes both. Down goes AMW. Just took them both right there. Look at this. Oh, using his weight. Side slam. Down. Pin. No, just two. I'll tell you what, that was close. But Brother Ray not even hesitating, going right back at Harris. Oh, what a shot right there in the back of the head by Storm. But oh, he gets out of the way just in time. Communication problems there, and then the DDT by Brother Ray. Pin. One, two. two. Oh, oh, man, lucky. was he barely in time. Just this close to history being made. Team 3D winning the NWA Tag Titles for the first time, but no storm save Harris. Suplex now by Harris on Devon. I'll tell you what, this thing right here is just, it keeps turning, the momentum keeps shifting. And there's the combination move right there by AMW. Pin! Two! No! Oh, just in time does he get out. Now we're sensing the frustration on the part of America's Most Wanted. Chris Harris, he thought he had Brother Ray put away. Double clothesline attempt by Devon doesn't connect. Gonna try for a double suplex and AMW right on target. I'll tell you what, they're just clicking right now on all cylinders. You can see that the team of AMW, once they feel it, once they get that urge, they get so close.
and nobody works together like they do. And they combine speed, they combine power, they combine everything. Look at this! Death and set. Brother A for the dead step. And Devon. No, not gonna happen. You know they, they obviously they know AMW in the death sentence because Devon didn't make the save for partner Ray. Devon now out of the middle rope, but he's cut off by Harris. Harris rakes the eyes of Devon. They're gonna try and follow right up, gonna try and bring him back in the ring, but here comes Ray from behind. You can't hesitate. That's what I mean. You've got to be quick and decisive. Look at this right here. There he goes. Oh man, he sits Harris really got the crowd going. Three, two, got it. No. Little tribute to the Road Warriors there. Top rope clothesline with the assist from Brother Ray, but so close. Oh, there's another look at it. Let's get back live action here. Out to the floor. Goes, goes Storm while Harris catches the boot. Pin, two. No, again, he's not able to get the finish, Brother Ray. Gets the shoulder up just in Storm, time. Storm's got a chair. Storm's got a steel chair. Harris is directing traffic in the ring. He's waving him in. He's yelling at him to come get it. Look at this. He's going up and you can see. Wait a minute. That's oh, God. God. His feet. Big right hand on the side of the head. There goes Storm for the ride. Into the corners. Brother Ray follows up, but Storm gets the boot up into the chest. Storm to the top. Take it just too long. Oh! Christian Cage, and tonight, the re-debut of the man they named Sting. Well, tonight, they stand side by side. Jeff Jarrett, Alpha Male Monty Brown. At final resolution, will you get the chance to knock the two of them down? Shane Douglas, it's real plain and simple and very, very obvious. 
TNA management has bitten off more than they can chew. They have backed themselves into a corner. And you know why is that? They don't have one, but they've got two flavors of the month. And you know what? A simple law of physics will tell you. Two people can't, play, can't occupy the same place at the same time. And both of those <laughs> people want this. That's the issue. That's where the mistrust is going to come in. Because on one half of that team, you've got a legend. You've got an icon in Sting. And he's going to step into a world that he hadn't been around in over five years. This business has passed him by. It's faster. It's quicker. They've got much superior athletes. And it is a political nightmare, Sting. You can't be trusted. Because when you get in the ring and find that out, desperate times, and you're going to take a desperate measure. And then on the other half of that team, you've got nothing more than a mid-card comedy act who's trying to get to where we're at today. And you know what? Sting, let me tell you something. TNA management has backed you in that another corner. You know why? Christian Cage turned on his own brother in their own hometown. And remember Chris Jericho? He stabbed him in the back, made your head spin. So you can't trust those two. So before it's all said and done, one of those guys is going to take a desperate measure and we're going to walk away with the victory. And tonight they're going to always know and all know that TNA, managed, that TNA is always and always will be Planet Jarrett. Sting! Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Do, 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 do. Time's up. Welcome to the Serengeti. You can't trust Christian Cage. He's just mad because he was the flavor of the minute. You're the flavor of the month, but you're looking at the flavor of the millennium. We know who we are, Shane Douglas. I am the alpha male, Monty Brown. This is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett. So be very, very careful, because tonight, somebody will feel Period. Every battle I've ever fought, I've known it's been one battle behind me and a thousand more to go. Daniels has been brutalized. Daniels has been injured. Another muscle buster. that I've done and the choices that I've made, I've probably got hell to look forward to. Is it possible that coming off a grade three concussion may have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew? Maybe, Shane. Maybe. I have no idea what you're trying to prove. There's a thin line between brave and stupid. And that line is crossed the minute you step into the room with me. Lancing through to the shadows of my actions. The king is Oh, look at that streak! Give me a muscle buster if you're ready. I've already injured you. Took me out if you're willing. I bring a blank canvas, Chris, that I'll paint with your blood one more time. Reach into my chest and tear out my heart if you're able. I ask you, Samoa Joe, what's the worst thing that you can do to me? I'm going to end your career. He's just going to town. He's had a month to think about this. A month that's all he thought about was Joe. He's already beaten Joe. Leave him alone. That's it. That's it. No way. the things that matter most. You shatter your aura of invincibility. And I will take back the X Division title that is mine. And that is gospel. It is time for the undefeated Samoan submission machine. Samoa Joe to defend the X Division championship against the fallen angel Christopher Daniels, the second of our two championship matchups in final resolution. 
the X Division title. It's at stake, and we're going to break it down with the X Factors. Here's the bullet points behind this title match. It was back in September. It was at Unbreakable when Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, and AJ Styles, they tore down the house for the X Division title. Tonight, two of those three meet for the championship. In November, Daniels suffered a level three concussion at the hands of his partner, Samoa Joe. Put him on the shelf for a month. We asked him if he's 100% healthy. He said he's 100% committed. 100% committed to regaining the X Division title and breaking Samoa Joe's seven month winning streak. Joe claims He's not just satisfied with injuring Daniels. Tonight, he'll end his in-ring career. And here he is, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. So many questions that we're asking. You mentioned it. Is he 100% physically? Those concussions are something so hard to come back from and so easy to re-injure. He's got to be very careful, but this man held the X Division belt longer than any man in the history of TNA, and the crowd getting behind him, and he's going to have to use every brain in his head to beat the power of Samoa Joe. He's unlike anything that we've ever seen in the three and a half year history of the X Division. He stands six feet tall. He weighs 280 pounds. And ladies and gentlemen, for seven months, he has defeated every opponent that TNA has put in his path. The NWA, the X Division Championship, it's on the line. Samoa Joe to defend. There's the champ, Christopher Daniels, the opportunity to regain his championship. We're gonna hear from JB, the official introductions for the title bout. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Orlando, Florida, it's time for your X Division Championship bout of the evening. First of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighs in at 218 pounds. Coming to us from the City of Angels, he is the longest reigning X Division champion in TNA history. He is the challenger, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the corner to my right, he comes to us from the Isle of Samoa by way of Huntington Beach, California, and is the undefeated, undisputed X Division Champion of the World. He is the Samoan Submission Machine and the X Division Champion, Samoa Cho. You notice the clean towel around the neck of the X Division title holder, Samoa Joe. He referred to it, Don, as a clean slate, an opportunity for him to start from square one with Christopher Daniels. For weeks, we saw Samoa Joe wear the blood-stained towel, the blood from Christopher Daniels, almost as if he wore it to the ring as a trophy week after week. Tonight, Samoa Joe says it's a clean slate, but he's not only going to injure Daniels, he's going to end his decade-plus career. It's kind of like that towel is his canvas, and he's going to use it, paint it with Daniels' blood. I'll tell you something, he plays mind games. As you hear, this crowd is absolutely deafening, but he does play mind games. But one thing about Christopher Daniels, he's as mentally tough as no one we've ever seen. Joe went for that big roundhouse kick. He missed. Daniels took advantage just moments. Right back with kicks and knees, but Daniels fights him off in the corner. Series of shots, forearm like uppercuts. Joe to the ropes. Daniels meets him, and Daniels rocked him. Follows up in the corner. High running knee right into the chest of Joe. You know that Samoa Joe is going to do everything within his power to try and exploit a 60 plus pound weight advantage against Daniels. But I'm amazed Daniels is taking it right to him, and Daniels is doing great here in the opening minute. He's got to use his speed. He's got to use that speed to have the advantage. Just like that. Just like that. As he steps off the Hurricane Rana right there, he's got to keep Joe on balance. He's got to keep Joe off his feet. And he does it again. And he, can you believe he takes the man of that weight that easily? Great leg 
strength by Daniels. First he snapped off that side head scissors and then hit the Hurricane Rana and he's got Joe on the defensive and how often have we seen this? Well, Not you, to, oh. you, you figure the longer oh. this goes, the advantage goes to Daniels, but then Joe defies all laws of gravity, all laws of motion for a man his size. But one thing about Joe, Samoa Joe can stop momentum so quickly with one blast, one kick, one slap, or one smash. Oh. And listen to those knife and chop. Just lighting up the chest of Daniels. Chop after chop. Big swing that time. Quick roll through here by Daniels. Got the leg hook pin. No. So close, but he just doesn't quite get it. Another roll up right here. Him. Two. Oh, and we call him the Samoan submission machine, Don. An example of it is this surfboard style submission move. You can see him just pulling right back on the arm right there, using that strength that he's got. But oh, he's able to get his foot on the rope. He's able to break a hold. And that's what Daniels is going to have to do. Christopher Daniels is going to have to be aware of where those ring ropes are at all times. Because if you get in one of those submission holds, it's the first thing that you're looking for, a way to break it. And if he gets you too far out in the middle, he's got you wrapped up and he's got you trapped. And that's just one thing that Daniels cannot afford. Quick reversal now by Joe. Daniels shot off, but look at him come back, and Daniels just... Nobody Amazingly, else. as Joe walked right away, Daniels not able to make the contact. Oh, what a kick right there. He just lifts him right off of his feet. A brutal kick right there from Samoa Joe. It's what he's known for, those stiff, brutal, lethal kicks. Now follows up in the corner, bottom of the boot, driven into the chest and head of Daniels. And you, got, you just have to be wary. Every time I see a blow, whether it's the open hand, whether it's the boot, a shot like that, to the, to the head of Daniels, you just have to be concerned. Oh, Joe drops down both knees, 280 behind it. Well, it's that weight that he has, and he's able to come at you so as he goes for a quick pin. Daniels able to just get the shoulder up just in time. And I'm going to tell you, Christopher Daniels is going to have to somehow try to figure out a way to stay one step ahead of Samoa Joe. And that's the thing about Samoa Joe, he's so hard to prepare for. He's so different than any other opponent that you face. Daniel stacked up in the corner, and Joe again. Oh, you hear that knife edge chop just echo throughout the arena. Daniel's able to get the elbow up, follows up, catches him with the forearm, momentarily rocks him, goes for the clothesline, not enough power behind it to take Joe down to the mat. Drop kick to the chest, Joe rocking, Joe reeling, able to land against the ropes, oh. snaps off the power slam, oh. one, two, I've never seen anybody that big that can snap it off so fast. We're gonna take another look. Incredible impact behind that. The snap, the torque, the way that Samoa Joe is able to twist his hips and at the same time balance his weight and come crashing down with the slam. And Daniel's able to avoid the three count. Gets the boot up and he's gonna have to get that boot up. Oh! What a jawbreaker that was! It's one way to do it. Man, oh man, using both knees, but you can see Daniels is hurt. It's just, it takes so much out of you when you get Samoa Joe, even when you're attacking him, it takes so much out of you. And at the same time, Samoa Joe, he was caught unaware of that move. He was surprised by it as well. Interesting reaction is the crowd here. What do you think? Sounds like more Fallen Angel fans than Samoa Joe fans. Oh, I think so, too. I think he's a sentimental favorite here. They know what Joe did to him. They saw what Joe did to him. And there he goes, and he hits it again. Split oh, leg moves. Two. Oh, no! Went back to the judo move, that STO, that back heel trip style takedown, immediately springing off the ropes. The split leg moonsault, but not able to put the champ away. Man, this crowd here at Universal oh. Studios here in Orlando, Florida, is absolutely on fire. These last two matches, knowing so much was at stake, it's so loud. And oh, oh! Daniel's got X! Wow! Dropped him on his head! This could be it! One, two, oh! oh he gets out of oh. it! Shocked that he was able to take the 280 pounder so quickly off the ropes and then drive him down with, with such power and such impact. And boy, he did drop him right on his head. Daniel's not able to get the three count.
One thing that we've noticed, though, is that Daniels is speaking of his head. He's been able to protect his head. True. That head that he's had, the, the concussion that was brought on. He seems to be very fresh. Oh, oh power bomb, man. pin, two. No. no. So close right there. And, man, Samoa Joe caught in midstream, but Daniels not getting quick. quit. No quit as he just goes firing right back at Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe, he's got those, those big, those legs that are like tree trunks. Positioned and wrapped around Daniels. He's got it, he's got his head, he's got his arm seized as well. Daniels misses with a kick. Quick single leg oh, he's got it. and rolls right over into the STF. He's got the cross face applied. He's got the leg positioning grapevine at the same time. And Daniels is gonna try and have to fight through this. At the same time, he's got all of his weight directly across Daniels' back. And now he's using his knuckles, almost like a corkscrew, right into the temple of Daniels' head. But look at Daniels, the fight is he somehow is able to get his movement going and get to the rope. And that's what he's gonna do because he was facing the other direction. Oh, Joe's Think about not happy. that effort. Joe's not happy when you're known as the Samoan submission machine. And when you slap on the STF and you have Daniels position in the middle of the ring, the last thing that you want to do is have Daniels get the rope break to try and show you up. And you saw that Samoa Joe was not happy. No, he takes pride in the fact that people can't break out of those submission holes. And Daniels is one of those kind of guys that he's so mentally strong, so mentally tough, he knew what he had to do. And look can, at this. Can he do it? Oh, Joe set it up. Oh, wait a minute. Joe snapped it off. Samoa oh, Joe with the hurricane run. Oh, God, what a close line. Count uh, one, count two. two. Oh, man. I mean, it looked like Daniels was going to power bomb him, and then Samoa Joe snaps the hurricane run off. How could a man that size do that? That was unbelievable. My God, you're right. First, I was shocked that Daniels would try the power bomb, and then Joe caught him with the hurricane run off. Daniels powers him down. Look at that streak by Daniels. Kind of an in your face. Is this the BME? Here it goes. Could be. Regaining the X Division title, but ending the seven month winning streak of Samoa Joe Daniels right on the verge of victory. You don't see this often. Joe out to the floor to regroup. Daniels challenges him. Oh, he, oh but he just didn't hit him quite hard enough. Joe breaks the down, but look at those forearm shots by Daniels. Momentarily rocking him and from the apron. Oh, Daniels able to avoid the leg sweep and then he just caught him. Shotgun kick to the head. Samoa Joe really right there. Daniels has had an incredible game plan. An incredible game plan. Is he gonna go over? Here he goes. Oh, oh man! Shot to the chest! Slingshot into the elbow drop, but you see the bad landing for Daniels. Landing right onto his hip. Can we get another look at this? Let's see how he lands. God, you can hear it. Oh, man, he just caught it wrong, and you can see Daniels fighting the pain in his leg. He's having a hard time getting up. What a move by Daniels, but you have to ask the question. Was it the right move at the right time? Is it going to come back to cost him the match? He's going to have to try and suck it up right here. He's going to need an adrenaline rush to fight through the pain that you know is running from his hip all the way down to his leg. And now he's going to try and get Joe into the ring. That's what these guys do. They're so mentally tough, though, that they, they just ignore the pain. They just ignore what they're feeling. And you know he's still, oh, what a kick by Joe. And here comes Joe coming off the road. Oh, and he just gives him the, the rake of the bottom of the shoe right over the face of Daniels, and he sits him to the floor. Well, you're right. He just booted him right out, didn't he? Control Samoa Joe. But he's got, oh no, he's got Daniels. We've seen this before, Don. Oh no, he's got him set up. And here he comes. Oh, right into the rail. Brutal shot right there. Going right to the head. Oh, look at that, that head. The head. That the head. Look at that. We can see a shot of that. Christopher Daniels. He caught him right in the head. Where he's had those multiple concussions. Oh my God, this, this is a dangerous situation. I mean, Don, it's, it's 
one thing to have one concussion, but the, oh, and he's concussion wide open. Don, the danger, the danger is where you have a you have those multiple concussions in a short time frame. I mean, think back, Steve Young in football. Troy Aikman, think about Troy Aikman from a cost of his career. So many people, they can't go forward, and that's what Joe means by costing him his career. And he knows he's ranked. Hit him right where it hurts the worst. And right now, you got to wonder what's going through Daniels' mind as that God. brain just smashed against that skull. Blood just flowing from the head of Daniels. Think think to the, to the career of Brett the Hitman Hart. I was there. I was in WCW. Yes, I saw the Goldberg kick, but it was the match against Terry Funk just shortly thereafter. Those series of concussions. That's where it's dangerous. And here comes AJ out. AJ Styles is coming out. Oh, he's, I think he's going to try to be some kind of a, an uplifting spirit right here for Christopher Daniels. Anything, maybe seeing him will make Daniels realize he's got to reach in, but Joe is just reeling on him right here. And look at the punches. Yes, several punches to the midsection, but also several more to the head. Daniels tries to fight back. Open hand slaps out of the corner. Fights and left. And forearm shots now. Reeling them off one after the other. Joe went for the kick to the head. And he, he missed it. Him. You can see that's where he's going. Here comes the Angels' wings. He's driving. Look at that. No. Daniels can't stand up. He's the dizzy. Angel gets a concussion. And he kicked him in the head again. This is dangerous. This is a dangerous situation for Daniels. Samoa Joe knows exactly where his target is. It's that head of Christopher Daniels. And you can see Daniels can't stall the knee to the head. Oh, this is just wrong. Come on, Daniels. I mean, this, got, this could seriously hurt him, we, Mike. We've got, we've got to think about this. No, not the muscle buster. Oh, no. He's got it. Oh, oh he God. drops him on his head. Muscle buster. Come on. Oh, you know what's next? The rear naked choke. Kakita clutch up wide. The move that's gained him so many victories. Daniels, can he get to the road? Look at him fight. And he's got the foot on the road. Keep Look at that. Situation. Yes. This could end his career. I'm telling you, I think this needs to be stopped. This, this, this he can't stand. He's this a, is serious, Mike. You gotta think about living another day right here. Yes. You, you, you gotta think long term. No, no, no. This, this no. is just. And he's got the no, chair right not there. Not on the chair. No, not this, on the just, chair. No. You're begging him not to do it. This could absolutely fit. No.
Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels is a father of two young children. He's got to provide for his family. This is a situation where you have to think past this match. You have to think to his long-term career. And ladies and gentlemen, without question, that career was in peril. It was in jeopardy. AJ Styles did the right thing. Thank God for AJ. I mean, it was like Samoa Joe sensed it when Christopher Daniels was wobbling and he couldn't stay on his feet. He couldn't apply any physical pressure. And he was done, as you can see, they're coming in there to get him out. But Joe was relentless. It was like he really meant it. He wanted to end his career. I've never seen such vicious things. And AJ Styles did the right thing. Raven ended his TNA career tonight. I'm not sure Christopher Daniels in trouble. We're gonna check out the package for the main event. The newest member of TNA is a man called Sting. It's a big go. And the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, versus Captain Carissa, Christian Cage, and Sting! Final resolution! Just got honor! Four or five months ago, 3D, Christian, Rhino weren't even on the roster. Now all of them are the flavor of the month. TNA management, the thing that they're trying to do to the alpha male and Jeff Jarrett, bringing these nutcases in here. We're going to handle it our way. Survival of the fit. TNA's hanging their hat, so to speak, on Sting. A fatal mistake. Skepticism has nothing to do with it. They know that this is the power. This is the power in TNA. We're the cornerstones. We built it from ground the up. The alpha male is Darwinism and It was all fun and games when Christian came out here, and he had his little parody. You know why the parody of Sting was so disrespectful? Because it was the truth. I've been in the ring with the biggest names in this business. I've been on the field with Dan Marino. Joe Montana, Drew Bledsoe, Jim Kelly. I think at times, people are intimidated to step in the ring with me. Intimidation? Has the Alpha Male ever been intimidated? Ever? Never. Now, Sting, on the other he hand, was on top of that mountain for a lot of years. I mean, he set standards in this business. At one time, I respected the guy. But this is 2006, Mike. This is TNA, the hottest wrestling promotion in the world. The flavor of the month, Christian Cage, and now the flavor of the minute, Sting, uh-uh. You're looking at the flavor of the millennium. Oh! Queen of the Hill, alpha female. You better have eyes in the back of your head at final resolution, because at final resolution, it's going to be showtime, folks. Yeah! Coming up next, Sting returns to the ring. But now, let's go to Shane Douglas standing by with Christian Cage. Ooh, we are now just mere moments away from the main event of Final Resolution, pitting you, Christian Cage, and a man they call Sting against the World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Jarrett, and his partner, the alpha male, Monty Brown. Now, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on one second, Shane. I, I got a question. Does this look like the face of a man that you can't trust? Well, you know what, if you can't trust me, jump on the phone and ask my brother. Jump on the phone and ask Chris Jericho if you can trust me. <laughs> Actually, on second thought, that's probably not such a good idea. I got a better idea. Why don't you ask each and every member of the Christian Coalition sitting in the impact zone tonight if this is the face of a man you can trust. Trust this thing, trust this. I am excited that you're in TNA. I'm happy, I'm excited that you're my tag team partner. And it looks like we feel the same way. We both can't stand Monty Brown and we both along with every single person in this arena tonight, can't stand more than anything else, Jeff Jarrett! Well, trust this, Jeff Jarrett, no matter which stinger shows up tonight, no matter what happens tonight, somewhere down the line, 
This mid-card comedy act is going to save the fans of TNA and win the NWA World Heavyweight Championship from you! And before I go, I only got one thing left to say. Because that's how we roll. The following contest is your final resolution main event of the evening. About to make his way to the ring from the Serengeti, the Alpha Male, Monty Brown. He said he's not going to be intimidated when he looks across the ring and see, he sees the icon sting. He said he's been on the field with Dan Marino, Joe Montana, and Jim Kelly, and the former National Football League linebacker. The veteran of two Super Bowls, the alpha male Monty Brown. No, it's not about intimidation. He says it's about trust. He and Jarrett, they say it's about mistrust between Sting and Christian Cage. It's time to find out whether they can trust each other as we see the alpha male already in the ring. And yes, here's his partner. Introducing his tag team partner. Coming to us tonight from the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. He weighs in at 235 pounds and is accompanied to the ring by Gail Kim. He is the current NWA heavyweight champion of the world and the king of the mountain, Jeff Sharon. Trying to put a wedge in between Christian and Steve. That's what he's trying to do. That's what Jeff Jarrett does. He plays mind games. Any way he can try to find an advantage. But you know, this particular match right here, it's not about world championships. It's about giving this man his just due. And I believe Christian and Sting will have that game plan all along. And announcing their opponents. He weighs in at 235 pounds. Captain Charisma, Christian. Christian Coalition, the man who has his group of peeps on their feet in the impact zone. He is undefeated in TNA. Captain Charisma, Christian Page, is headed to the ring, and Jeff Jarrett, Monty Brown, you may have played some mind games, but when it comes to mind games, you may be messing with the wrong people in Christian Cage and in his partner, the legend, the icon, who's set for his return to the ring. But the 
got goosebumps, guys. I can feel them right through the tuxedo. What a reaction as Sting returns to the ring. I'll tell you something, Dave. People have waited for this and waited for this, and it's a surreal moment as you just know you're on the cusp of something great. The question's now, how's he gonna be? But look at him. That's a man who was dedicated in getting back and he wanted to go out on his terms. And this is why he's come back to TNA this year. This is his year. Quite honestly, unlike any reaction that we have ever witnessed in TNA, unlike any reaction we've ever seen in the Impact Zone, as they just about tore off the roof. Wow. That, that'll play mind games with you, just that crowd reaction. If you're Jeff Jarrett and Monty Brown, you've got to just block them out. Because they're not, they're not yelling, let's go Monty and let's go Jeff, I can promise you that. The Christian Coalition, very vocal behind Christian Cage. You can sense that everyone here, Don, realizes that they're sitting in on a piece of history as we see the alpha male level. Christian Cage with the shoulder block. They realize that they're watching, Don, a wrestling dream team unfold. Quick roll up here. Bonnie Brown's shoulders barely down for a one count. I'll tell you what, these two guys have gotten familiar with each other very fast here at DNA. And Christian and Monty Brown. And one thing that, that Christian has faced and, and, and had to take more times than most people, and that's that pounce. But yet he's lived to tell about it. And you know what? He knows how to avoid it. NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Jeff Jarrett now in the ring against Christian Cage. Shoots him off into the ropes. Jarrett misses first with the clothesline, then with the back elbow. But Christian puts on the brakes. How about that? A little Jarrett strut right back for Jarrett and then takes him down with the drop toe hold. I love how he just likes to mimic Jarrett and get into his head. Christian Cage and Sting, yes, they're gonna have to trust each other, but that doesn't see, oh, look at this, Jarrett not wanting him to get the tag. Christian it's Cage has the fans, do you want him in the ring? Yes, there's the tag to Sting. This is what we've been waiting for, here's the moment. Sting's return. Jarrett trying to figure out what he wants to do right here. He's looking into the eyes of somebody that's so happy to be back in the ring. Look at that, look, that stare. Not the same reaction for Jarrett. Side headlock taken by Sting. Jarrett gonna try and shoot him off into the ropes. And, oh, down, and Sting just took him right down. Put the shoulder right into him. Again. Leapfrog by Jarrett. Attempt at the hip toss. Blocked by Sting. And he hip tosses it right to the man. Took him way up in the air. Sting goes airborne with a drop kick. Questions answered, Don? Absolutely, I'll tell you what. I've seen some comebacks before, but this is unreal. You still got it! You still got it! Listen to him! You still got it! Letting him know! You still got it! You're damn right he does! Gonna lock it up again! No, Jarrett takes the shortcut! Drives the knee right into the midsection! Follows up with a series of rights, and now Sting's rocking! You've got to be able to block out that crowd noise, and Jeff Jarrett does it right there. He knows that no matter how you look at it, it's been a while since Sting's been in that ring. And if he can get some kind of momentum going, then he can use it to his advantage, but Sting not showing any kind of rust just yet. Double over Jarrett, Sting off the road, drives him down face first into the canvas. Here comes the alpha male in. Monty Brown, he's gonna get set for the ride. Sent off into the ropes by Sting. Double him over with the boot. And then the face jam, you saw Christian Cage from outside putting in the tag, the blind tag. He's now the legal man. I'll tell you what I like what Christian did is he got Sting involved early. Got the juices flowing. The competitive juice is working. And you can see the blows writing down on Jared. Oh! Oh, no, blow. Distraction by Gail Kim. Griffey pulled aside. Oh, man. Christian Cage driven out to the concrete. 
sent out to the arena floor by Jarrett. Wow. That was a tribute to Sting. You saw Christian in the corner. What, you what a turk and run of my Gail Kim right what? there. She just snapped that off. And that's left Christian Cage in no man's land as Monty Brown's got him oh, on the rail. Oh, man. He dropped him. Throw first across that steel guardrail. And the alpha male are going to toss a weakened Christian Cage back into the ring with his partner, Jared. Gail Kim was the the person that turned it all around right there. What a drop kick by Jarrett, as he just levels Christian with it. Firmly plants both legs, both boots, right into the chest, and there's the strut. It's kind of right back in your face right there, and that's one thing, if you're gonna make fun of somebody, be prepared to have it come back, but look at the fight in Christian. The rights, the lefts from his knees and now back up to the vertical base, but stopped in mid-move by the alpha male. And Monty Brown takes him down. Oh, oh backbreaker across the knee. Quickly drives him down again and then just T-boned him overhead with the suplex. The strength of this guy is unreal. He does the patented scream right at Sting and then this goes over to business right there. Referee Andrew Thomas letting Sting know he can't come in. He goes to the pin, no. Right back to the cover. And again, able to roll the shoulder in two. Monty Brown is relentless with these pinfall attempts on Christian Cage, but not able to put him away. Oh, look at this. Good quick tags right there. If they've got a game plan, once they got through all the initial, you know, the initial force of this crowd and the initial sting entrance in the ring, it's now Jarrett and Monty Brown doing what they do best. You're right, that feeling out process, that high level energy. And now Jarrett drops down to the floor and oh man, caught him with the right hand. Quickly, Jarrett back into the ring. They're gonna come charging at him. Oh, nobody home. Christian Cage moves out of the way, and Jarrett crunched against the middle rope. Cheap shot from outside by the alpha male. I'll tell you what, man, it was a wicked shot too, and Jarrett saw it, and he goes right down there because Jarrett's in pain down there himself, and this is the way for him to get his bearings and keep a grip on Christian Cage. Christian, he's gotta try and move Jarrett. He's gotta get all of his weight behind him. Get over to the side of the ring and get Sting tagged into this matchup. And you know Jarrett's gonna fight for his life to not enable him to make the tag. Look at the hand oh, out there. The tag. It in. The referee didn't say it. Oh wait, come on. The referee did he not got say him. it. And now the double team on Christian Cage. Oh, double front suplex by the alpha male and the king of the mountain. Jarrett Brown dropping right across the rope. Pin two. Whoa. Whoa. I'll tell you what, Monty Brown's been relentless on these pen attempts. I mean, you kick out once, he goes right back at it. And you can see they're wearing Christian out. They're, they're closing off the windpipe right there, trying to cause him to not get in the air. And you can just see the spit coming out of Christian Cage's mouth. He can't breathe. Well, he's had his neck, he's had his throat draped right across that top steel cable by Monty Brown. Let's go, Gonna try and go for a suplex here. Takes him over. Snap suplex, One, right into a pin. Two. No, oh, just in time. He's got to get a tag in to Sting. Or these guys, especially someone with the strength of Monty Brown will wear him down. Someone with the experience of Jeff Jarrett will know exactly what to do. He's trying to set him up for the pounce. Oh, but look in, look at that, just using tried to, his momentum. Yeah, tried to use the head scissors, extending his legs. Monty Brown would have none of it. Sends Christian Cage out to the apron. Quickly, the alpha male gets up to that middle rope and now gonna try and bring him back in. Christian Cage fights him off. You can see Sting yelling at him. Just hang in there and find your way over here to get the tag. Look at this, it's just Cage is fighting it off with everything he's got on the strength of Monty Brown. Yeah, but those words of encouragement, look at this! You gotta do what you gotta do! And in that case, it's called survival. Look out! Oh, Whoa, he can barely stand. Balance. Biting, gnawing on the head of Monty Brown. Oh, splash! He hits it, but he doesn't have enough to go for the pin. And at the same time, when, when he came crashing down with the frog splash, the impact that he, that he crashed down across the chest of Monty Brown did not enable him to go One, for the pin. Two, the arm. just no. doesn't have enough. He didn't have enough leverage right there. He did not have the proper weight positioning. It was a desperation attempt. He extended the arm, he draped it across the chest of Bonnie Brown, but it was not enough to put the alpha male away. And again, he gets close over there, the tag, and Bonnie Brown pulling on the feet, knowing exactly what he's gotta do. Christy Cage, not look how close he is! They're leading out, and Bonnie Brown... Jared, Jared, oh, he Jared, 
pulled him. Cheap shot. Jared pulled him down off the apron. Just when it looked like Sting was going to make the tag. Oh, look at the music. Gail Kim is a shield. Yeah, human and look, shield. he goes over to tag him. And there's nobody there. Oh, no. And Sting back up. But no. Christian Cage tossed back out to the ring. Right here in front of us, Jeff Jared grabbed two chairs. There you can see he's setting him up. Again, Sting trying to get in here. The referee's not letting him. Look out! Oh, the... Able to avoid that concerto. And now, Christian Cage, he just double TDT to both. Now he's got to get the tag. He doesn't have any strength left. He's got to somehow roll up to get in there. Listen to him. There he jerks. He's got to go on gut instinct right here. Just on pure guts, Christian Cage gonna try and slide. Get your body anyway over to that side of the ring. Sting's got his arm, his hand extended in. There's the tag. No problems with the referee seeing it this time, and he's fresh. He's fired up, and look at those right. Look at that clothesline. I mean, he's relentless out there, one after another. In the corner, as he hits it. Stinger splash on Jarrett. Oh, he ducks under. Oh, no. Oh, no, the referee down. Contact made with Bonnie Brown. Now he's got him stacked up in the corner. The alpha male and the king of the mountain both. What's he going to do? Bonnie Brown lost out to the floor by Sting. He did it effortlessly, too, as he just absolutely picked him up and threw him over. Now he's got Jarrett. Scorpion, turn him over. He's turning him over. But the referee is down. The referee is still down. He's got the Scorpion Deathlock applied. Jared trying to make it to the ropes, but you're right. Referee's knocked out. Look at this, you see right there. Oh, he, he got the rope, but the referee didn't see it. They pulls him back to the middle of the ring. Jared tapping out. Oh, Monty tries to come in. Cage cuts him off. Christian Cage. And look at these guys just blow after blow. Jared's been tapping out for minutes. Look at this. Oh, no. Right on top of Sting right there. Christian Cage was tossed overhead by Monty Brown, and Christian Cage just, he just crashed right into Sting. Oh no, look out. Sting and, and Christian Monty Cage. Monty Brown's got the belt. Nose to face, nose to nose. I mean, Jared earlier talked about this mistrust, trying, trying to plant a seed. Monty Brown with the title belt. Well, there's some trust for you. He pulled he him pulled out of the way. the way. He pulled Sting out of the way. Now the exchange, Christian Cage sends Brown out to the floor. Sting's got the title belt. Whoa, look out! Well, you can see right now, you're just anybody that touches you. He's got the belt right there in his hand. There is a, is there some mistrust? Look at this! He drops it and goes right after Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett and Monty Brown, they planted the scene about mistrust between these two, but now they're working as a team, and they take the alpha male and drive him right into Jarrett. And now they're gonna send Monty Brown out to the floor. That leaves Jeff Jarrett in the ring by himself, two on one. Who's this? Wait a minute. No. What is, come on. Bobby Roode and Eric Young of Team Canada, the associates of Jeff Jarrett and the Alpha Male, they've now hit the ring. Four of Jarrett's minions coming in here to help him out in his time of need. Double DDT. Scorpion death drop. Both men hit Sting's patented Scorpion death drop. Unbelievable. Christian to the top. Yeah. Everything switched right now. 
It's all Christian K. It's all Sting. Looks like they're both on the same page here. Oh no, they went for the splash. Both men going for the Stinger splash. No, not the guitar. Oh, he's got it set up, buddy. Wait a minute. Look at he's got the bat and he takes care of the guitar. And he, he just took the guitar with the baseball bat. Just turned it into a million little pieces. And Monty Brown goes flying. Look at this. He's got him. Scorpion death drop. Scorpion death drop. Count. Two. What he had in the tank. Well, let me tell you something. He took everything that they gave him, and he was standing, and he let it build in him, and it re-energized him. And look who's standing at the end. It's Sting and Christian Cage. And look at the crowd. Just give him this tribute. He did it. In my mind, he answered all the questions. And look at this right there. You see him holding that bat that destroyed, or holding the guitar, I'm sorry, that was destroyed, playing it. Jared can't believe it. We have witnessed the return of a legend, the return of an icon. Yes, go time is back in TNA. And he's just soaking in the moment. It's got to feel so good, and he deserves this. He deserves this moment. And look at this. In the ring right now, Christian Cage is holding the bat up in the air, pointing at Sting, and hands it to him. Look at this. He, it's almost as if he just said, Sting, this is it. This is your moment. And he did it! He answered all the critics! He answered all the questions! The face of TNA! It's changed forever! History is made at Final Resolution! This has been a presentation of TNA Wrestling.